Good afternoon. Welcome to the Lethbridge City Council meeting for Monday, November the 16th, 2020. And we'll begin with the acknowledgement statement. The City of Lethbridge acknowledges that we are gathered on the lands of the Blackfoot people of the Canadian Plains and pays respect to the Blackfoot people past, present and future while recognizing and respecting their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationships to the land. The City of Lethbridge is also the home to the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. We'll now move on to bouquets. We'll start with Deputy Mayor Miyashiro. Uh, nothing today, thank you. Councillor Campbell. Uh, nothing today, sir. Councillor Carlson. Thank you, Mayor Spearman. Uh, I'm sure you'll do a, a bouquet as well. Uh, just a, a shout out to those organizers of our uh, different Remembrance Day ceremonies and uh, uh, events this year. Uh, they were different, but they were very moving. Uh, appreciate uh, all the hard work that went into doing a changed and socially distant and safe um, ceremony at the Cenotaph and the other events around town. So just a big shout out to those folks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councillor Kaufman. Uh, nothing, Mayor Spearman, except a reminder about roll call. Okay, we'll do that in a minute. Yeah. Councillor Morrow. Nothing. Okay. Councillor Croson. Nothing, thank you. Councillor Higgin. Thank you, Mayor Spearman. I just want to uh, give a huge shout out to uh, the watch. I had the opportunity of doing a uh, 9.6 mile walk with them here a couple of weeks ago as they uh, go about their duties and what they do, uh, in, you know, for the citizens here in Lethbridge. And it was a, an extreme eye opener. And I would, I would, uh, uh, in talking to them, it would be great if anybody here had the other, the opportunity to go on a walk with them because it is, it's tremendous. What you find out about the different things that they do and the support services that are there, I would, I would uh, definitely suggest going out and, and doing a walk along and bring your hiking boots and some uh, cold gear. So thank you to the watch. Councillor Parker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is, uh, who's sitting in Mr. Hawkins' uh, seat right now, may I ask? It's uh, Mr. Mr. Dole Sanchez. Well, it is Mr. Solchaz's birthday today, so I just want to wish him a happy birthday today. Okay. Happy birthday, Mr. Sanchez. <laughs> Nothing else, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to give uh, a bouquet to the uh, five community organizations that are working together on the campaign for hope for Christmas. So we have Lethbridge Family Services, the Salvation Army, the Interfaith Food Bank and the Lethbridge Food Bank. And uh, all those organizations working together with the city of Lethbridge. Uh, we have donation boxes here at City Hall for people who would like to contribute food or toys. And certainly any of those organizations would appreciate cash gifts. They can often uh, do better with cash gifts uh, to help those who are in need in our city. So uh, of course with COVID uh, happening this year, many families have been affected. And uh, these community organizations working together collaboratively are looking to uh, support the community and asking for community support in return so that families and children in our city can have the best possible Christmas under these circumstances. So uh, my uh, bouquet goes out to those five organizations who are working together to support those in need in our city. Thank you. With that, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Okay, roll call, roll call, sorry. Councillor Campbell. Uh, here. Councillor Carlson. Present. Councillor Kaufman. Present. Councillor Croson. Here. Councillor Morrow. Yeah. Councillor Parker. Here. Acting Mayor Higgin. Aye. Deputy Mayor Miyashiro. Here. And Mayor Spearman. Here. Present. Thank you. Thank you.
Now I have a resolution from Deputy Mayor Miyashiro, consent agenda. Be it resolved that the minutes of the special meeting of City Council held on Monday, October the 26th, 2020 be approved and that the mayor and the city clerk be authorized to sign the same. And further be it resolved that the minutes of the organizational meeting held Monday, November the 2nd, 2020 be approved and the mayor and the city clerk be authorized to sign the same. And further be it resolved that the minutes of the regular meeting held Monday, November 2nd, 2020 be approved and that the mayor and the city clerk be authorized to sign the same. And further be it resolved that the minutes of the public hearing held on Monday, November the 2nd, 2020 be approved and the mayor and the city clerk be authorized to sign the same. And further be it resolved that the minutes of the special meeting of city council held on Tuesday, November the 3rd be approved and the mayor and the city clerk be authorized to sign the same. And further be it resolved that the city clerk receive for information the status of directed resolutions November 2nd, 2020 with the following amendment. That the review of bylaw 3446 streets bylaw fighting be deferred to a future meeting of city council no later than March 30th, 2021. And that the date of return to council of the request for authority to donate unclaimed items, Lethbridge Police Service, be deferred to December the 14th, 2020. Further be it resolved that City Council provide first reading to the following bylaw. Bylaw 6255, amendment to bylaw 5990, in order to set offsite levy rates for 2021 and 2022. Deputy Mayor Miyashiro. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I invite questions from my colleagues uh, regarding consent agenda. Are there any questions from members of council? There being none, I uh, ask you to call a question. Okay, question has been called. All in favor? Are there any opposed? Okay, okay adoption of agenda from Acting Mayor Higgin that the agenda of the regular meeting of City Council of November 16th be adopted as presented, including all communications as submitted by the City Clerk. City Clerk, are there any amendments? Uh, yes, Your Worship. We have a revised agenda item, and that's uh, an official business resolution from Councillor Hagen, item 6.2. It was uh, just included in your agenda uh, probably around noon. And we also have an addition to the agenda um, an official res business resolution from Mayor Spearman entitled uh, Paying for EMS Dispatch in Lethbridge. It would be entitled 6.3 if Council unanimously votes to add this to the agenda. Thank you. Okay, so 6.2 is doesn't require unanimous. Okay, I'll withdraw 6.3. So with that, uh, just 6.2 as amended. Uh, Councillor Higgin? If that is everything, I'll call for the vote. Question's been called. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. That carries. Okay. We'll now move on to presentations. And we'll invite uh, Mr. Roy Remus, resident. Uh, to come and present to us on opposition to Lethbridge Overdose Prevention Society. Mr. Remus, please come forward. You have five minutes. The Kai, <coughs> excuse me, hello, uh, councillors, city staff, management. Uh, I would like to ask leave of council to have a uh, overhead presentation be put in the system so that it can be watched as well as a paper handout. I, I realize it wasn't included in the agenda packet. And I ask your leave. Okay, the PowerPoint has been submitted. Does council agree? Any objections? I see none, go ahead. Okay. Hey, uh, Myself, Roy Remus, and Cassandra Dash are uh, residents of the city concerned about this current situation. We do not represent any group, party, or specific uh, cause. Okay, this uh, 
headline page here shows a, a sample night of the uh, orange tent being put up in Galt Gardens and uh, it is uh, legal and we want to discuss its operation and what we think should be done with it. The historical basis for our concern is of course Arches supervised drug consumption site. Uh, we found that the cons consultation of the citizenry and the businesses was inadequate when it was initially instated. Uh, we tried to get information, uh, many of us, on the exemption to the Controlled Drug and Substances Act, and we found that was fully redacted, so we had no information at all as to how they got approval for it. And we also find that their uh, nonprofit status governing purpose is HIV and, eight and hepatitis C support completely. There is no mention of an SDACS, and I don't know how they could continue to do that. Uh, the biggest problem that uh, many people had with Arches was there was no verifiable user statistics, information on the number of referrals or their finances. And we saw a major crime increase and verified by citizenry, uh, LPS, McLean's, Stats Canada and the city in particular in setting up protective services to walk people to their vehicles, etc. So that was obviously a concern. Uh, found funding was primarily from the province with federal government and the city contributing and public donations totaled, depending on the year, somewhere between ten and $30,000. So a very small portion of the approximately $9 million that they operated on in the last year. Uh, the initial development, the needle packs and the million dollars a year of support all came from the city. Uh, no, the needle packs didn't come from the city, but the support for them to be able to distribute it came from the city. And we saw major problems throughout with the citizen safety, health, and the city economy. And right now there's a cr criminal investigation that was set up by an audit because of $1.6 million missing and various irregularities. We do note that there was 80% less visits to the site after the Alberta Health took it over and that the over dose calls to the EMS have dropped down 36% after Arch is physically closed. And we see, and everybody around here sees, that the area health is coming back. However, now LOPS has popped up and is applying for a CDSA 56.1 supervised drug consumption site exemption. Now I'd like to introduce Cassandra to address the uh, LOPS. Good afternoon and thank you for the time and consideration given for the opportunity to approach His Worship and Outstanding Panel, City Council of the City of Lethbridge. I'm not going to waste time discussing the answer to this moral question of the city finds itself once and again. I'm here to represent the proper procedures and practices that are well established with the AHS in the handling and disposal of biomedical material and the obligation the city has not to only protect its employees but to protect all of its citizens of this beautiful city. As we've all been made aware, an illegal and unsanctioned activity that is not welcomed by the citizens of Lethbridge or the very people it claims to help has tried to create an environment of endless unsafe drug use in, on city property. While spending a great deal of time physically witnessing the activity in which this tent wants to introduce, one with a health and safety background instantly sees the endless list of deficiencies that show this operational model not to work. To a greater extent, the city has been made aware under no uncircum uncertain circum terms that the tent and its activities being carried out on it on city property is unauthorized by a society that is not registered by people who are not medically trained using funds that have been acquired fraudulently by saying said society who claims to be exempt under the federal government's group exemption policy, which is not a fact, not recognized under in as much as not supported by either the federal or provincial governments. Is the city aware of the legal implications this can have? Ultimately, any liable, either financial or otherwise, in the event of any accident, injury, death, or other malfate that should fall upon anyone as a result of the unsanctioned, unpermitted tent, as the city is aware, the acti activities are being carried out. Respectively, as the city is aware of the tent and its activities, is the city also aware that the infractions are being carried out by this tent and the financial and legal implications of these actions upon the city? Who I wish to reiterate 
is ultimately responsible for activities being carried out on their property by any person or group conducting business or event gatherings without a permit from the city. Is the city aware of the laws, acts, and other pieces of legislation that this tent is in breach of? With all due to respect, it is not a simple bylaw infraction under bylaw 5651Y regarding setting up a tent in the city. With all due respect, I wish to inform the city that the actual bylaws, mandates, and legislations that directly apply to the breaches occurring by the operations of this illegal tent and the operators thereof are ultimately as follows. Municipal legislations include but are not limited to the bylaw waste, bylaw 6146, parks bylaw, bylaw 5651Y, Council Code of Conduct Bylaws, Bylaw 6125, Safety Codes Permit Bylaw, Bylaw 6110, Business License Bylaw 2018, Bylaw 5658Y, Procedure Bylaw, Bylaw 5411, Unsightly by Property Bylaw, Bylaw 5630. We also have provincial legislations include, but not limited to, the Alberta Public Health Act, the Societies Act, Health Professions Act of Canada. Federal legislations include, but not are limited to, Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, Criminal Code of Canada, Occupational Health and Safety Act Code and Regulation, Canadian Tax and Charities Act, Canada Health Act. With the same respect, I respectively ask the city why they continue to allow this tent to operate fully knowing that it's unsupported, unsanctioned by both federal and provincial government, and further in doing so, is the city able and willing to provide, in the spirit of transparency and accountability for leadership, a detailed accounting ledger of the costs incurred by each sect of municipal government administered by the City of Lethbridge, including the city bylaw officers, the Lethbridge City Police, City Council, and other, any other jurisdictional program or service administered by the City of Lethbridge. Each day, this unauthorized tent is allowed to stay in operation while a fully funded, well administrated, and wholly supported mobile overdose site unit operates 400 meters away. In finality, with the same respect, given that these laws and legislations are common knowledge, and given the fourth mentioned facts, one can reasonably expedite that the city solicitor knows these pieces of legislation. As as such, I wish to ask the city solicitor why he has chosen to acting as legal counsel for the city of Lethbridge breach judiciary duty and allow the city to continue their course of inaction, knowing the extreme consequences to the city and ultimate their constituents. You're about two minutes over the uh, five yep. minute limit. So uh, can you please wrap up? Yeah. Okay. Thank as you. an NCSO officer straight out, there is no safety precautions done in this tent. We do not do heart surgery in the tent in, in the park. Why is this being allowed? Why is there no inaction? Hey, I'd like to thank you for your presentation. Not sure if there's any questions from council at this point. Hey, I see none. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry we didn't get finished, but it's a lot to cover. Okay, I've got a resolution here. Opposition to Lethbridge Overdose Provincial Society, LOPS. I'm looking for a mover. Councillor Higgin. Be it resolved that City Council receive this presentation as information. Councillor Higgin. Thank you very much for the presentation. And uh, if there's no further debate, I can call for the vote. Okay, question's been called. All in favor? Any opposed? There are none. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we now uh, move on to 4.2, and I'll ask Mr. Conrad Westerson, uh, commander of the PSCC, uh, to come and present, along with any co-presenters, regarding Public Safety Communication Center staffing request. Your Worship, if I can just, um, before we get started on this one, um, 
this, uh, this came to council today as part of the, uh, the public agenda based on a faulty assumption I made that the Bill Meal report was out there, that it was public, that council had time to, to consume that, read that, understand that. Um, I understand that there's a lot of information uh, presented in this brief. Um, on another reason that we, um, we wanted to get this to council in a timely manner is with next week's, next week's budget review occurring. Um, ideally, would, we would have liked to have seen this issue um, addressed. Um, as I mentioned the last time this came forward, it is a little counterintuitive given what's going on with the centralization of dispatch. Um, so I say that to, uh, to ask council. There are two ways or to, to proceed. One is to continue with this presentation. Um, we wouldn't be seeking a decision today. Um, the other way forward on this is to defer this to a CIC where we would have suitable time to walk or more time to walk council through what is a very complicated issue. My concern here is that we get it right. Um, there is a real need for council to hear this information. I just want to make sure that it comes forward at a time when council is able to uh, to receive it and process it. Um, and I certainly wouldn't want to put uh, sort of paint council in a corner today. Um, I'd much rather us take our time that, and, uh, and and really give this the thought it requires. So I, I just offer that before we start. Okay, Deputy Mayor Miyashiro, would you like to? Yes, um, thank, thank you, City Manager, for that. Um, I, I do agree with you that I, I believe it'd be more appropriate to bring it forward during our budget deliberations, um, since it is a budget item, and it is a, uh, I think it's something that needs a lot more time to be discussed than we will allot today during council meeting. So if we could, if we could move it to the, um, to our budget deliberations next week, I think that'd be more appropriate as, as you said. These gentlemen have come here today. Do we wish to allow them to make a presentation, recognizing there would be further discussion? Uh, the concern I would have, I would echo what city manager said, that if, if we need a more in-depth discussion about this, it, I think in the context of other funding, uh, other funding requests and considerations, um, I, although the, I know these two took the time out to produce this and, and to come today. However, I think in the context of our overall budget, it might be more appropriate for us to have this discussion next week. Okay, thank you. Acting Mayor Higgin. I was just going to second. Uh, Deputy Mayor, <laughs> Deputy, sorry. Deputy Mayor Shiro has just uh, uh, said exactly what I want to say. Okay, Councillor Carlson. Uh, Thanks, uh, Mayor Sturman. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Mishiro. It was going to, I had already emailed Ms. Hilford uh, about a motion to refer this to budget next week. Um, question being, is there an appropriate time where we could refer it to during that, that week uh, where the uh, gentleman who, I, I'm sorry, I can't see on my tiny screen here, uh, could make the presentation or should we have the presentation now and then refer any discussion or questions following to budget next week. So, so far, councillors uh, Miyashiro and Higgin have suggested that it should take place during the budget discussion. So uh, if there can be a uh, time determined where these gentlemen can present and allow more time, that would be helpful. That's, that's the proposal so far, Councillor Carlson. Excellent, thank you. Councillor Kaufman. Uh, thank you, Mayor Spearman. Um, I understand the, the wisdom of definitely uh, postponing this until finance. However, um, the presenters are in the room. We received the package last week. Uh, we've reviewed the material. Um, would it be prudent for um, the best use of our time uh, next week in deliberations to receive the presentation today? It gives us time for um, additional questions to be uh, pondered or additional considerations to be pondered and then we can enter into a conversation about it. Uh, no need for the presentation during deliberation week. Uh, so I understand uh, three of my colleagues have already stated they prefer a deferral of the presentation. Um, we're here, we've read, we're prepared. Can we at least receive the presentation today and then reserve questions and uh, commentary uh, for next week? Okay, so I believe Councillor Carlson agrees with you. Uh, so I think there's two, two in favor of uh, deferring completely till next week and two in favor of having the presentation now and then also discussing next week. 
So, any further opinions, Councillor Higgin? Yes, I, and I'm in light of hearing that conversation. I think that's okay. They've they've come here prepared. So if we if you do want to carry forward with the presentation, I'm okay with that as well. Okay. So Councillor Higgin has changed his view. Uh, Councillor Campbell. I'm happy to hear the presentation now. Give us gives us more time to. Uh, okay. Think. So now the consensus is let's have the presentation and have more an opportunity for a more detailed discussion next week during finance. So is there anyone that objects to that? I see no one objecting to that. <laughs> okay, uh, so I will ask our uh, guests to proceed with their presentation. Um, if we can work out a, a mutually convenient time next week with the city manager, we may have some more detailed questions on uh, some of the additional reports in your presentation and the material therein. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, members of City Council, I'm Conrad Westers and I'm the commander of the Public Safety Communications Centre and with me is Joel McDonald, the Deputy Commander. Today we're here to identify a need for support for the PSCC that has been growing over the past eight to ten years, a uh, staffing requirement to have dedicated supervision in the centre. We're here to seek approval for five FTEs to uh, be kept from the identified 10 that we will be losing in the AHS transition and uh, be able to use those to augment the fire dispatcher's position so that in the future we will be able to have dedicated shift commander or dedicated supervision in the center. These three graphs identify the increasing workload that has occurred in the last eight years. Um, the top left graph is the increase in the PSCC call volume. These are specifically just 911 calls. It shows that the increase has been about a 40% increase in the last eight years. The bottom left graph is an increase in the number of computer-aided dispatch events that have increased over the last eight years, about a 48% increase overall. And in the right graph, there is a, an identification of the number of actual units, police and fire, that are on the street today that the fire dispatcher and the police dispatchers are responsible to maintain. Now, this does include just the, the Lesbridge ambulances in that unit description, but it doesn't include the 20 other outside agencies um, ambulances. It does include all the fire stuff in the, in the outside areas. So this is a, a brief history of what's kind of occurred over the last eight to 10 years, and in specific, the last three years. Uh, that identified that we recognized we had an increasing workload in early 2017. We sat down with police and fire and did a number of workshops to identify the, the need for supervision and, and what we needed to do to go forward. As part of the 2019-22 budget, we put forward an initiative for N61 for a dedicated supervisor that was uh, not funded at that time. The workload continued to increase and we brought in the Belmeo operational report uh, near the end of 2018, early in 2019, to do similar to what was being done by KPMG as an operational review of the entire city. Uh, the the Belmio report was completed in November of 2019, and since then we've been trying to get in front of council to explain the, the needs. Uh, COVID occurred and delayed our presentation, and COVID continued, and since then in August we, were, we had the identification that AHS was gonna cancel the dispatch contract, which further exacerbated the issues. And so we've been trying to get in front of council with this issue since September timeframe, and this is really the first time we've had an opportunity to get here. So what we're looking for is there's 10 staff FTEs tied to the AHS contract, and we will be losing those 10 staff. What we would like to do is to try to keep five of those staff, because they're trained, to move them into full-time fire dispatch, which would alleviate or to relieve one position, which is a, a combination position. The fire dispatcher is presently the same person as the shift commander, and there isn't dedicated supervision. We lose a lot of uh, we lose a lot of ability to do supervision with what's going on because of that. The cost of this is about six hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars, starting in January. As you can see. Uh, the City of Lethbridge 911 or PSCC is the only centre in Alberta that does not have a dedicated supervisor. This severely limits our ability to do our job and, and provide good supervision 
And so what happens today is the top three desks on the left-hand side are the 911 call takers. The bottom three desks on the left-hand side are police dispatch for the bottom left two, and the bottom right one in that green box is the fire dispatcher slash shift supervisor. EMS dispatch is what's in the blue box, and the top one is the call taker, and the bottom one is the ambulance dispatcher. So what we're asking for is to be able to separate that EX4, that desk on the bottom right in the green box, so that I have a dedicated supervisor on the floor and a dedicated fire dispatcher. What we're looking for is the authority to keep five of the FTEs that we're gonna to lose to the AHS transition and pay for them out of some source that's identified out of the annually starting at $698,000 in January of next year. Recognizing that uh, questions will be staved off until the future, thank you for the time to give, us our, to give you our presentation. Hey, are there any questions at this time? I see none. I expect there'll be questions next week. And uh, I think it'd be helpful for Mr. Westerson if we we're able to uh, direct those questions to him through our city manager so he can come prepared. Yeah. Thank you, Council. Okay. I'd like to thank you for your presentation at this time and we'll deal with the resolution. Public Safety Communication Center staffing request. Uh, can I have a mover for this motion? Count, count, Councilor Miyashiro? Okay. Be, be it resolved that Council refer this item to the November 23rd finance meeting. And further be it resolved that Mr. Westerson be thanked for his presentation. Councillor Miyashiro? Oh, question. Questions. Questions been called, all in favor. Okay, we'll move on to submissions. I have a resolution from Acting Mayor Higgin, apartment, condo, and multifamily recycling. Be it resolved that City Council receive this presentation as information, and further, be it resolved that City Council consider the draft amendment to bylaw 6146, the waste bylaw as in attachment one. Councillor Higgin. Thank you, Mayor Spearman. Uh, I believe that Mr. Sanchez is here. And uh, through city manager, if there's any, any uh, conversation around this, any additions that uh, Mr. Sanchez wants to speak to that. But when this, when this first, uh, when we were first asked to bring um, uh, this back to council, we did so a number of weeks back, identified a number of um, observations and concerns with, with the uh, bylaw amendment, um, received some further direction with council. So we're back today with that draft uh, draft amendment, and I'll just, if Mr. Sanchez has anything to add. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> so as we presented before, we, we have two options for the multifamily recycling uh, for council to consider. Option one is uh, to have an exception for those multifamily properties over 45 units. And uh, by doing this exception, there will be a, a bylaw amendment that has been included as part of the submission. This has all the details on, on, on what do they need to do in order to meet with the requirements to have uh, the, the exception approved. Uh, what we have been also identified with this is that there might be some uh, 
pressure on those customers that remain on the program, but we also have been able to identify the one-time savings that could be used for the first year to evaluate the exception option and that will allow us to come back to council and report back on the effect and at that time, there could be a final solution. So again, we could do go ahead with option one for one year. There has been a one-time uh, uh, funding that we were able to, to achieve in order by deferring some uh, items that we have in 2021. They could be deferred for one year, no more than that. But again, that will allow us to review the program to see how the exceptions work and then come back to council and report on how many customers decided to take on reception. So that again, that will be a more informed decision. Uh, option number two that was presented is just the status quo, as we mentioned before, and keep moving forward with the program. So just uh, thank you, Mr. Sanchez, for that. So to understand it then, the option number one is there would not be an additional cost to any other citizens that there's a way to to uh, find some funding to be able to look at this over a year and come back with some more information so currently nothing will change with the current subscribers and uh, it would be status quo for the, uh, the the condos associations at this time for one year to be able to look at this that's correct so for one year there will be a one-time deferral of that cost and uh, we will be able to test the uh, uh, the exception and then come back and report back to council. And then a decision in one year going forward. So what we do we do moving forward? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez. Deputy Mayor Miyashiro. Austin an answer. Thank you. Councillor Campbell. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sanchez. I just wondered if there has been reaction to the condo units on this proposal or has there been any feedback on this proposal, um, seeing that it's a one year, that it wouldn't be a permanent thing at this time? There have been some calls from some of the condos that are currently implemented asking what this exception is going to look like. And at this point, the answer has been, we don't know if this is gonna go ahead. If they carry, it will be for one year. And again, that will be there for any multifamily property over 45 units. And they will be able to adopt that exception if they wish to do so. Uh, but at this point, there is a, there is no major opposition or we haven't heard other than probably five or 10 calls from those existing ones. Thank you. Councillor Carlson. Thank you, Mayor Sperman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sanchez, for being here to answer the questions on your birthday. Happy birthday. Um, if I recall from the presentation we had, there was going to be a loss of revenue. I thought it was in about the $100,000 range if we went with this option uh, that was per annum. I, I think what you're saying is that you have a funding source for that 100000 to sort of be a stopgap for one year. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, that's correct. The, the, the revenue, the loss of revenue was around $200,000, a little bit more. And we okay. have found at one time a funding source for that to test this out. And as we're heading into budget next week, trying to find um, operational efficiencies and savings, um, if we weren't having to put this stopgap measure in place, would that funding be available to council during our budget deliberations? Uh, Mayor Spearman, through to Councillor Carlson, the we're anticipating um, those savings during budget deliberations to be um, used towards the pressure that this one year um, kind of wait and see how this all works process um, will be used to offset those pressures. So um, that isn't so over and above what's right. potentially considered next week. So by going with this option, we're, we're actually sort of um, taking away one of the tools we would have had. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? Councilor Morrow? Yo, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, sorry, I think I'm understanding this, but just to make it clear again um sorry mr sanchez you said that the cost for this 
did I hear you say it was 200,000? Yes, that will be the loss of revenue by allowing, and that number came from assuming that 20% of the multifamilies over 45 units will uh, take on the exception. Okay, so just to be clear, so if we allow the condo units of 45 or more to continue doing what they're doing, where we do not pick up their recycled goods, the city will lose 200,000. That's correct. That correct? We, that's correct. We could lose up to $200,000. Okay. And then I thought I heard you say that based on this resolution, we will continue and allow this to happen for one year, which means we are looking at a loss of 100000 Did I hear that correctly? No. What I said is that by allowing this for one year, we have uh, identified some funding that includes postponing some items or uh, deferring some work to allow this test to happen for one year. And then at that time, we can come back and report back to council. Okay, so the funding that you found, I'm trying to put the pieces together. The funding that you found then would cover, because this was to begin January 1st of 2021. So I'm assuming that the funding that you found is equivalent to $200,000. After we did all the different elements that we are deferring, yes, that's correct. They could be deferred for one year, and that's what we're proposing today. And so where did this funding come from? Where did you find 200000 So some of the items that we review is, as council know, we have a life cycle account where we actually save every year in order to replace the carts for the residents. So there is an amount that every year is being saved in order for when we need to do the purchase and life cycle those cards. And uh, what we have been doing is that we could probably defer that for one year. Uh, but again, this, this can be a, a continuous work because at one point we still have to life cycle those cards. Okay, and so when I hear the word defer, I kind of get a little bit, uh, and I don't, I don't know if I like it because defer means that uh, pretty much you don't pay me now, you're going to pay me later. So by us doing this now and, and listening to what you're saying, um, which I, I do support, um, will there be a double whammy, a double hit sometime in the future? On the car side, in this particular case, no again, because one year, if we defer, it's not gonna make a big, it's not gonna make a big difference. So we can always add another year for the life cycle. No, not all the cars are life cycle in 10 years. Some of them are before that time. Some are a little bit after. So we always have that wiggle room for the life cycle. Okay, thank you. And my final question then, if we support this resolution, nothing changes for one year with the condo units over 45, is that correct? If council decides to support this, uh, the change, there will be a change and that change is that now multifamilies over 45 will have an exception option, which we didn't have before. Right, which means, I'm, not, I'm gonna guess that that means that these condo units of 45 or greater, uh, nothing will change for them at least for one year. That's correct. Thank you. Any further questions from council? I see none. Well, now I've already read the resolution. It's a submission, Councillor Higgin. Yes, no, I just, I just want to uh, open debate with uh, thanking Mr. Sanchez and his team for, for looking into this and finding some of these uh, possible efficiencies that we could look at over the next year. I, I realize it's up to 200,000, but we don't know that number. And uh, it could be zero. We could, we could find uh, other ways to, to, with other savings that are out there. So uh, looking at a year, I think, is the, the best thing to do. It gives the opportunity to, to get some quantifiable data that uh, can be brought back to council to make a further discussion into the future. So I thank you for uh, looking into this. Thank you. Any debate from councillors? Councillor Morrow? 
thank you. Yeah, I, I do uh, want to thank everybody to, to try and make this work out. I, I think <clears throat> I would be remiss if I wouldn't thank uh, Craig, our city manager, because I think, uh, uh, Craig, you were able to understand the community, these uh, condo units and, and council, and uh, I think you had a, a role in, in making this happen at least for one year. So thank you for that. I totally will support the resolution. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Miyashiro. Thank you, Mr. Spearman. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez. Again, um, echo what everyone else has said. I think this is a, a great way to move forward. Uh, the evaluative period, I think, will give you um, the information that you require to make sure that you can move it forward. So thank you very much. I support this. Councillor Campbell. I, and if I'm broken record over here, but uh, I just uh, love the, the fact that people came forward with concern. Management took them seriously, figured it out. Uh, and we've got uh, at least a, a year to, to look at it, and I, I applaud that uh, that the cooperation between two parties. So I'll support the resolution. Thank you. Thank you. And does anybody else wish to speak? I see none. I'll ask Councillor Higgin to close. Thank you again. Appreciate all the comments. And uh, again, uh, thank you, Mr. Sanchez, Mr. Dalton, for for and all the administration that were involved in this and finding these. Uh, a way to make this this happen and to give us a year to find out this this data so thank you very much and with that i'll call for the vote okay questions been called all in favor any opposed it's unanimous thank you okay okay next uh, we have a submission from Councillor Carlson, report on phase two operational review opportunity regarding in-home wastewater services. Be it resolved that City Council continue the provision of in-home services on demand 24-7, but implement a charge in the sewer charges bylaw effective January 1, 2021. Councillor Carlson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Spearman. Uh, my colleagues may have questions on this. I had one. We did have uh, a gentleman come in to Council Chambers requesting to make a presentation. I don't know that I received anything from uh, that individual. Uh, I did get uh, a couple emails regarding this uh, in the in the intervene intervening time, but I'm wondering if the city clerk ever got a presentation or a submission from the fellow who wanted to make a presentation? There is an email from Mr. Eugene Willem Milowat, uh, Willemowitz, I believe, uh, and he is in the chambers today. Uh, so there is an email dated uh, the 6th of November, 2020, that all okay. councillors should have. And uh, city you. clerk, is there anything else I should add? Uh, that, e that email did come in. It was uh, brought in on Thursday, and uh, we distributed it this morning. Okay, so it was dated November the 6th. We received it on the November the 12th, and it was distributed this morning? Okay. So... Okay. Thank you. I, and Do you want to hear from Mr. Willemowitz? Uh, not pronouncing his name correctly, I'm sure. <laughs> and um, your worship, I'm not sure if every member of council has had a chance to review that email that I now just see came in. Um, uh, I'd be like to put that thing on the screen, if you wish, please. Hadn't received the request by the deadline, so, so, uh, Miss Mr. Uh, can you tell me your name, please? Uh, Eugene Vilamovic. Okay, so when you were here two weeks ago, we said the rules were that you had to contact the city clerk's office by the Monday prior to the city council meeting. So that would have been one week ago. 
You didn't do that. I come into City Hall and I wish to speak to City Clerk, but they inform me the office is closed, there's nobody upstairs, and I give it to security guard this letter to pass to the office. And basically that's the letter I have in my hand. And I think I was coming with the right time. It's not my fault. Nobody can invite me to office and they say office can, they don't working for public and I give it to security guy a week ago and he's supposed to bring it to office and he's bring it to office basically. I want to talk to city clerk, but okay. All right. we're going to let you proceed unless uh, the majority of council objects. Uh, if you could quickly summarize what you would like. I mean, I have everything right there on the letter. You just put it on the screen and everybody can see it, I think. Yeah, the letter, the letter will be part of the public record. Yeah. Yes. So if you could just quickly summarize what you would like. I like it that uh, city su uh, supporting that cleaning sewage from the roads for free, at least like a one time in year, doing uh, for free for maintenance too, basically. And I like it put everything what city can do, like uh, if they can clean its sewage and how much they're going to cost people if the sewage is plugged up on the property how much that's going to cost and how, what, is, what can services do for free. I like it to get everything be righted in every month on the bill, like uh, showing people what, what kind of service we have it. Okay. So basically your proposal is if the tree is on the city property, it should be free. If it's on the resident's property, then the charge would apply. Yes. Okay. And I like it to put that thing every month in a bill. Like, if, for example, if I have a sewage backup and I have a water in my basement, it's hard for me to can figure out what to do. But if I have it on the bill and I see it that every month, if something happened, I know right away I can call that number and that's where I'm going to get help. Make it kind of clear. Okay. Are there any questions? I think we understand the proposal. Okay. I'd like to thank you for your submission. City Council will now. Yeah. Hey, Councillor Kaufman. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mayor Spearman. Um, not certain who I want to pose this one to. I guess um, whoever is uh, in Mr. Hawkins's place, Mr. Sanchez. I guess that's you. Um, kind of to the um, letter of Mr. Uh, Wilimowicz, um, as well as the other letters that members of council received today, the concerns are generally coming from people who live in older neighbourhoods, established neighbourhoods. Concerns generally are focused on uh, boulevard trees, the roots. Uh, and a couple of concerns we've received as well are also in neighbourhoods where we know that there can be um, wastewater uh, infrastructure issues again, related to roots and backup. Do we uh, record that information? Do we have that data on files? We, we know which residents and which areas uh, tend to experience uh, the necessity for a, um, a cleaning annually or more than annually? I will defer the question. Mr. Kopp is here and he will be better suited to answer that question. Thank you. Yeah, use, please uh, use that microphone, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kelp will reply. So your worship to uh, Councillor Kaufman, the, um, uh, we do have records of where the work gets done and it is, uh, it is definitely a safe assumption that it is older neighborhoods with clay pipes that have root issues as opposed to newer neighborhoods with plastic pipe. 
Thank you. So as we go in and we change these over, and I'm not certain how often we're doing that these days, um, theoretically that resolves the issue in these neighborhoods, correct? Um, we are not, we don't proactively replace the, um, the services. It's, we'd, we do lining of the, the main, the main sewer, but the, the services, uh, um, half of that pipe is, belongs to the homeowner. So there, you know, there is renewal activity, but it's, but it's uh, often at the, um, it, there's an expense to the homeowner for that to take place. So it's not that it's just a matter of uh, time before the problem goes away. Okay, thank you. So we don't, when we put in a main, uh, if we're replacing a main or upgrading a main, we actually don't connect the main to the clay pipe. We just put the existing pipe into the main is what you're telling me. Yeah, generally with, generally with sanitary sewer, we, we, um, the, the current practice is not to actually dig up the street, but to, to put a liner in the pipe and then restore and then restore um, the connection by just cutting a hole in the liner from the inside of the of the main. So, so the the problems between the main and the homes are are not currently addressed um, in that uh, neighborhood sewer lining program. Thank you. Are these then then the issues are around those um, neighborhoods that have clay pipes? Everything else, we are fairly certain we're fairly clear of, of um, issues. Are we? Yes. Thank you. Is it possible then to create a um, at least a temporary exemption for those who are on clay service until uh, something is uh, implemented or resolved? Uh the, the end result of such a, um, a proposal would be no change at all because that's who, we, that's who calls. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councillor Croson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think my questions have basically been asked by Councillor Kaufman. Uh, my questions have coming from the community as well is very similar. Um, but the one thing I'd like a little more information on is, do we have any way of knowing how much of this problem is coming from city-owned trees as versus, you know, the uh, community's privately-owned trees? Which trees are causing the majority of the problem, or do we know? Well, your worship to Councillor Croson, there's, there's, you know, there's two, two ways to look at the problem. One is that it's caused by trees. And the other is that it's caused by pipes that allow the trees to penetrate. But to answer your question, um, there's, you know, in, in some neighborhoods where we have hundred year old trees, uh, you know, the, 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 the extent of the roots is, is as big or bigger than than the canopy, so you know the, there's roots everywhere. If you were to dig up somebody's front yard, and it could be the neighbor's tree or it could be a boulevard tree, it's hard to say. Yeah, no, I can believe. I imagine it is very difficult to know which one or which. I'm not sure if you can answer this, Mr. Cowper, or if there's anyone in the room who can. What is the um, the asset value of our trees in Lethbridge. So we're looking at 400,000 for this, but what are our trees themselves worth that are causing these problems? Um, I, I don't have an answer to that. The, the, that would be a question for the parks department, but I'm sure it's hundreds of millions. Great. Right. Okay, no, I, it's just that I'm looking at the assets that we're trying to save the trees and if we change this, will the trees be knocked down as a concern I have? Thank you very much for your answer. 
Excuse me, I, I want to say something. Uh, we're in the question period at this point. We're going to follow our process for the meeting. Okay, thank you. De Deputy Mayor Miyashiro. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Willemolz, for coming in here. Um, the, the question, I guess, Mr. Kelp, we had this discussion last time about the origin of the routes. Um, but we do know that, that you can determine where the break in the pipe is to, despite where the route started, right? So if the break happens after the property line towards the street side, it's likely, it's, it, that would be considered city property, is that correct? Yes, that would be correct. Okay, so, so for that argument's sake, if the pipe, I, and I think what Mr. Willemotz is saying and a lot of other uh, emails that we received is, if it happens on, they were talking more about breakage, in fact, other than the origin of the trees. And I think a lot of, a lot of the emails we got were talking more about the location of the breakage versus the lo location of the trees. Um, and so if, if we could determine, and I think you can by using your uh, cameras and, and even by your um, routers, is at what point the breakage occurs is, is that's what we determine as the location, right? So if the breakage occurs on the street side, on the city side, then the city would pay if, it, if it's on the property owner side, regardless of where the route started. Is that what you're saying, Mr. Willemolz? Yes, that's correct, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Morrow. Thank you. Um, I'm just reading through the information here and it says, according to the KP report that we uh, approximately will save $400,000. This costs us $400,000 annually. Um, how confident are we in that $400,000? Is that, is that something that uh, our administration agrees with? Uh, your worship to Councillor Moreau, it, the presentation that I made uh, uh, two weeks ago uh, confirmed that the total cost of the program is $400,000, but that a, a portion of the activity is um, in support of the utility and um, would not collect a revenue. And so that's, that's the estimate is closer to 250,000 uh, of that 400 that we could be recovered through this, uh, through the, uh, that proposed option. So I'm just trying to understand because that, that when I'm further reading the report there, I'll, I'll read this and I'm a little bit, uh, I need some clarification. It says the report fails to identify that not all of the services provided by this program are for utility customers. Part of the op part of operating the wastewater collection system requires investigative work happens from within homes and businesses at the request of water and wastewater. And city administration estimates that that call uh, those calls account for 13 percent. So I guess what I'm trying to understand is uh, maybe I'll back up a bit because I also read that we have two crews of two employees working 10 hours shift, so that's 20 hours, and they do this seven days a week, and whatever they can't call we uh, send out uh, and, and we refer to local contractors. So my question is, what exactly, I guess I'd like to um, get down deeper into what exactly are we trying to eliminate that the city does to save money? Because I'm confused, is it 400? Now you said something about 250. So what is it that we are doing and that we will actually eliminate doing, or if we're gonna to continue to do it, we're gonna do it for a fee. Can you maybe just explain that a little bit? Okay, so there's, I, I presented three options. The first one is to continue what we're doing now, which has zero impact on the budget. The other option was to, was to continue to provide the service and charge for it, in which case we wouldn't eliminate work, we would be adding revenue. And then the third option is uh, to stop delivering the service altogether. 
for the customers, in which case there would be a reduction in activity to, you know, by approximately half. I understand that. I guess what I'm trying to find out is, based on what's in this presentation, we have two crews of two employees. So we have four city staff that do this work. I'm to assume that these four city staff are kept busy and that's all they do 24 seven based on what I'm reading. Is that fact? Yes. Yes. And they're delivering the service seven days a week, but not all four are working seven days a week, 10 hours. Like they're not each working 70 hours. So how, how much of the work do we then uh, refer to local contractors? What percentage? Well, zero. Well, it says calls not responded to by staff are referred to local contractors. All invoices from contractors are covered by the utility. Yeah. Okay. I, so what, what does that mean? That means that for after hours calls, if, if we cannot... Uh, respond, then, then contractors respond, and we re and we pay the contractor. Okay, so so our staff only work a ten hour day. After the ten hours, that's considered. Uh, those calls are referred to a local contractor. Correct. Okay, I I have lots of questions. I'll hop out if there's others, Mr. Mayor. Hey, Councillor Kaufman. Uh, thank you, Mayor Spearman. Um, uh, Mr. Cope, um, do you know what the, the individual line replacement cost would be, a, a ballpark of what it would be to replace that line from Maine to a person's house? And if not, so, no is a final answer, a fine answer. No, there's... It like uh, it depends on how far the house is set back from the street you know the length of the pipe but it would range from five to eight thousand dollars okay thank you thank you mr Spearman. Councillor carlson thanks mr Spearman. uh thanks mr cop for being here to answer questions i thought also when i reviewed the kpmg report uh this was highlighted because it was a service that lethbridge provides that others do not is that correct Yes, that's correct. I don't believe they found any, an, another example. So at the moment, we're the only city that provides this service that we could find. Well, yes, to my knowledge. Okay, thank you. Councillor Morrill. Sorry, just to follow up on that, do other cities provide it but charge or there's no other city that does it? If you looked at the KPMG report, there were eight municipal examples, three of which uh, charged and the other five did not provide the service at all. Okay, so you can't, you can't say that no other city provides the service. They I, do, but they charge for it. No other municipality provides the service for free. Okay, for free, thank you. Um, I'm just going to go back to what my, my train of questioning before. So you said <clears throat> we have two crews, two employees working on rotating schedule, 10 hours of coverage. But then you also said that so once they do their 10-hour shifts, any other calls outside of the 10 hours, so that leaves 14 hours in a day, that means that uh, a local contractor would be, we, would be called out and we, pay, we, the city, will pay that bill, correct? Just yes. a simple yes or no. Yes or no. I'm going to defer to uh, Leanne Lammerston. She's got the. Okay. So, just to clarify, uh, calls that come in after the sewer crews are done for the day. Uh, are they go out to city staff that are trained to do the work? Uh, it's a volunteer basis. So if they are interested in coming in for the overtime, they can respond to the call. 
we go through our list of employees and no one's available, those calls get referred to Roto-Rooter or a, a different available contractor. Okay, you're, you're, you're starting to go where, I, where I'm, I'm intending to go because then I also see after all calls are on a volunteer basis. So that means if I'm a city employee and I'm one of those two crew members, I put in my 10 hour shift, I don't then just willingly volunteer my time. If I have to go out at midnight, I'm gonna get paid double time for that. Is that correct? That's correct. But if I hire a private crew to go out there, a local contractor, they go out there, we will still pay their bill, the bill for them doing the work after hours, correct? That's correct. Okay, and all of that, I'm just trying to nail down, all of that equals $400,000 per year. Is that correct? The entire program. So the guys that work 10 hours a day, seven days a week on straight time, plus the overtime that we pay for those calls that are responded to by city staff, plus the calls that are referred to the local contractor, that whole program is 400000 Perfect. And sorry for making this so long, but that's exactly what I was try trying to get at. Thank you for that. Okay, so now we're being faced with the three options. And if we were to, if we were to continue as is and pro continue to provide the service, we would be out, out, I use the word out. It would cost the city $400,000, which the KPMG report is saying we could find that we can use, we can, if, we get, if we get rid of this program and no longer are involved, we would save 400000 per year in our operating budget. Am I understanding that correctly? No, I'll ask uh, Mr. Kaup to come back up, but, it, but there's still a core service component that would need to be provided, so I think it's, it's actually 200000 that we would save, but I'll defer to Mr. Kaup. So, uh, Alderman Morrow, the, the entire program also... That $400,000, as I mentioned earlier, also includes work that we do uh, at the request of the utility. And the scenario for that is that my colleagues at the transportation department will do an overlay of a residential street. Well, before we, uh, they pave, repave the street, we'll go in and check the condition of all the sewers so that we don't have to dig the street up within days or weeks or even hopefully a years of them putting down fresh steamy pavement. And so no one, so that's also included in the $400,000. Okay, my final question, if I may, Mr. Mayor, and I think I heard the city manager say, because that's what I'm trying to get at. You guys are using the number if we choose option one, status quo, it's 400000 But what I'm hearing by the questioning of, of council is that realistically, it's $250,000 that we would save because the, the other 150000 of that 400000 we would continue to do as you've just identified. Is correct. that correct? No. Yes, it is correct. Okay, so then why do we have 400000 as status quo when technically we're not saving that? It's a little misleading, I think. Shouldn't that be 250000 in our presentation? Uh, I don't have the, the table in front of me, but that... Well, it says net cost that's to wastewater the, operating budget. Status but that's quo, the total... That, that's the total cost of the status quo. Yeah, there's no change to status quo from the, from the, the status quo. But should that number not be 250? I'm trying to nail what really we are saving because I'm not hearing that we're saving 400,000. We're not. And with the status quo, we're not saving anything. But 150,000 of that 400,000, if we decommission the service, we're still going to be doing 150,000 of whatever the $400,000 total is. That's you just said that. That's correct, and that's what shows up as, as option three. Okay, the math just doesn't add up. I'll hop out, thank you.
Deputy Mayor Miyashiro. Oh, thank you. So related to this, sorry, I just popped in my, you, you're, if, if we decommission it, we still have a staffing cost. I think Leanne just said that. We, we, we still have staffing costs regardless if we have the service or not. Are these the same staff that, that um, uh, pig out fresh water lines as well? The same, the same staff? No. They're different. No, they're different staff. And so, but, so in, in the scenario where we're decommissioning the service, it would, we reduce our costs by half. So two out of the four staff and one of the two vans that they operate out of would be um, uh, out of service. So given all we've, we've talked about this time and the last time, it is possible though in your opinion that we could differentiate between what is city property and what is private property? Yes. Any further questions from council? I see none. I'll ask our guests to take seats in the audience. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Carlson, this was your resolution. Report on phase two operational review opportunity regarding in-home wastewater services. Be it resolved that city council continue the provision of in-home services on demand 24 seven, but implement a charge in the sewer charges bylaw effective January 1, 2021. Thank you, Mayor Spearman. Uh, this is one of the tough choices uh, or tough decisions that council knew we'd be facing when we requested the operational reviews. Uh, the operational reviews were tasked to find ways we could find efficiencies, bring us more in line with what other communities provide. I, I do know that our community um, does get a higher level of service from the city of Lethbridge, especially in, in regards to this service. Uh, and it's very appreciated by our community. However, council uh, did realize that we needed to maybe make some changes to bring us more in line uh, with other communities and to find some cost savings and efficiencies. Uh, I appreciate that uh, Mr. Kelt and his team have come back with these options. Um, the option I'm putting forward is one that will will reduce the lever, level of service somewhat to our community. Um, well, not even reduce the level of service, but make people pay for, for the service that they're requesting. Um, it will save the corporation around $250,000 a year by making this change. I know these are tough times and we're trying to find efficiencies and ways to save money. So this is this is the option that I'm putting forward uh, for council's consideration. I'd like to hear my colleagues' views. Deputy Mayor Miyashiro. Uh, thank you, Mayor Spearman. Um, thank you, Councillor Carlson. So I'm wondering if we could um, clarify this in the charges part of the resolution that would designate the charges for um, blockages on city prop or on private property, not city property. Is that possible? Mr. Solicitor, city manager, is that possible to designate that in, in the bylaw to say where the charges, what will trigger a charge for the resident? Before, maybe before we get to the, 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 the legality of it, I'd, I'd like to ask Mr. Copper team if, if we can determine that. <clears throat> it's uh, Mr. City Manager, it is uh it is possible. There there may be challenges in the field, but it's not uh it it is possible. The other part of the equation is that if half of those, uh, uh, half of those blockages, are in the in the road right away, our assumption is that the charges would 
be applied regardless. So that $250,000 would not be realized if half of the, if only half of the service calls are charged. So you, so you say we can't do it? Well, so is it a, sorry, let me ask you then. Maybe I'm, this is too simplistic. So you run 30 feet of snake in through the clean out and the property line's at 20 feet the blockage is at 30 feet, it's gonna be on the city side, not That's the right. property line. Is it that easy to determine or not? Yes. So all I'm saying is if the blockage occurs on the city side, then we pay. If it occurs on the resident side, it doesn't matter where the yeah. trees are. I just wanted to bring to your attention that $250,000 of revenue was based on charging for all, serve every time we, we I understand go. That. And, and so if it's, if, if it's, it, with your distinction, it, there may be a hundred thousand in revenue instead of two hundred and fifty thousand. Right. That's right. I just wanted to make that clear. No, that, that's fair. That's fair. I understand that. Thank you. Um, if that's the case, I'd like to make a, a, an amendment to, uh, if I can get a second or to implement a charge for all blockages on the city side of the property line. I'll second that. Okay, that amendment by. Councillor Mishiro, seconded by Councillor Campbell. Everybody's clear on the amendment, Acting Mayor Higgin? Yeah, a, a question that, that I'd have, uh, if there's many chance, we've seen out there that, that if there's a, a tree that's in the city, yet the roots go into public, or sorry, private property, it could cause that concern. It could still be a city tree that's causing that issue. And so in your amendment, I'm just on the city side of the property line. Can will that deal with that? I just because I, I was, I mean, you beat me to the punch. I wanted to postpone this. You can see how many questions we have. I was really wanting to. I know this is on the table now. It's to postpone this and just get more information. And, and but I will wait. That will be coming. Just so you know. <laughs> so that that uh, amendment. No, Mr. Cobb just said we could determine that. And, and I, I think what, what I heard, uh, Councillor uh, Acting Mayor Hagan, is that um, at, at times, yes, there is blockage on the residential side caused by city trees, but, but the other, conversely, there could be um, residential trees that are creating blockages on the city side. And in, in fairness, if you, if, you, if you do the charge where the blockage is versus where you think the trees are, it, it would it would even out at some point because most of the large trees if you even look at some of our older neighbors most of the large trees that are in in line where where i've lived anyway are on the boulevard especially if there's a boulevard if there's no boulevard it's more likely to be on the on the residence but if there's a boulevard there's likely the block is going to be on the boulevard side where all the giant elms are and willows okay I will get back in line for my Question. amendment later. Okay, so we're dealing with this amendment. Does everybody understand the amendment? Everybody can see the amendment? Councillor Kaufman? I, I think, oh, sorry, go ahead. Thank, uh, thank you, Mayor Spearman. Actually, I'd just like the mover to uh, explain the wisdom on this, that there would be charges for all blockages on the city's side of the, oh, thank you. On the city side of the property line. Sorry, the <laughs> the the charges to the resident would not be given. There would be no no charges if it's on the the city side. There would be a charge to the resident if the blockage is on their side of the property line. I'm, I just misstated that. Sorry. So there okay. be there would be no charge to the resident if the blockage is on the city side. Okay. Yeah. If that could be. Clarified, thank you. Yeah. yeah, the clarity needs to be, if I can, Your Worship, um, for all blockages on the residence side of the property line. For sure, I yeah, think same, same difference, thank you. Okay. Everybody un understands the intent of the amendment. Ready for the question? All in favor of the amendment. Okay, can we do a roll call, please? 
Councillor Campbell. In favour. Councillor Carlson. In favour. Councillor Costa. Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt, if I may, Mr. Mayor. It's Joe. I'm just reading the resolution. I'm, I'm still seeing that the first part and the second part are are opposites. I'm not quite clear. Sorry. Oh, okay. So what the first part is saying Okay, so the first part was saying what? Do we provide, continue to provide the service, but we're charging, period. And the amendment is that we will continue to provide the service, but charge only if it's on private property. Am I understanding that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Okay, can we continue the roll call so far? Councillor Campbell is in favor. Councillor uh, Carlson is in favor. Councillor Mayor Spearman. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I just, uh, Councillor Morrow just raised a point. Um, we now have a residence side. Should it not read on private uh, property? I, I, maybe there are businesses affected that then wouldn't. I don't know. I'm curious to hear what the mover was intending. Councilor Miyashiro, you wish to comment? Sure. I think, yeah, it would have been just easy to say no charge if it's on the city side, but for sure, make it so. He says yes. Okay, can we can please continue with the roll call? Worship, I think we should get the wording right before we have a vote. So are we all agreed on the wording, the mover? Private side of the property line? The private property side. Private property side. A portion of the property line. Carlson, you said the private property side of the property line. Is that not what you just said? I was just trying to provide clarity. Is it only for residents? No, that's what I know. That's what I'm saying. But you said the private property side of the property line. I would defer to uh, the city manager or Mr. Kaup for the proper wording. Or the city solicitor. Sure. I think the wording is clear, but if I may just offer, just having listened to the discussion, if what council is trying to achieve, uh, it, it might, a motion that might achieve what you're trying to, if I'm understanding the conversation correctly, would be to implement the charge, but require that the city waive that charge in circumstances that we might be liable for the, for the blockage in nuisance law, regard, regardless of where the blockage is or, because even if we don't, you could get a claim from a property owner and have to pay it out of the insurance, which would be a different side. And I, w I wonder if that's what council's, sort of the end that council's trying to get with this motion. Well, sorry, the amendment is, for, for myself, the amendment is where the blockage occurs. Okay. If it occurs on the city side, the people won't pay. I if think the, pro the, the wording is clear for that intent, to, for us to draft a, a, an amendment to the charges bylaw in that. Mr. Mayor, it's Joe. I have my hand up if I may ask a question. Hey, go ahead. So tell me the way it is right now. Doesn't the resident have to pay right now, as is, if there is a problem? What's that? Yeah. The answer to that question is no. Councilman Shiro, I'm just trying to make sure that I've got this understood. If you want me to support your amendment, I'd like clarity. I need to understand it. So as it is right now, the city will come on my property and I don't have to pay? Correct. 
And what we're trying to do here now is that if it's on my property, I pay. That's the intent of the amendment. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Do we start the roll call all over again? Okay. Let's go. Okay. Councillor Campbell. Uh, in favor. Councillor Carlson. In favor. Councillor Kaufman. In favor of the amendment. Councillor Croson. In favor of the amendment. Councillor Morrow. Opposed to the amendment. Councillor Parker. He's not there. He is there. Yeah. Councillor Parker. Okay. Councillor or Acting Mayor Higgin. Here. Oh, Councillor Parker. Can you repeat, Councillor Parker? Acting Mayor Higgin? In favor of the amendment. Deputy Mayor Miyashiro? In favor. In Mayor Spearman? In favor. Carried 7 to 1. The amendment. Acting Mayor Higgin? I would actually like to put, uh, ask that we postpone this until we get further information. As you can understand, there's been a ton of questions on this and I think the clarity is just not all there. So I'd ask if there's no, no rush on this and uh, if we postpone this. And I would need a seconder, I take it. Is there a seconder second. for the postponement? Ryan Parker, seconder. Okay, mm -hmm. Councillor Parker is seconding the amendment. I have a question on... Not, not the amendment, the tabling. The tabling, the postponement. Okay, table. Okay, and so there's no debate? Debate a postponement, yes. Okay, well, I just have a question. Like, I'm thinking about the timing. Um, and for a bylaw, I guess a bylaw can be enacted at any time. It's not that it has to be done by January the 1st. So it's not like we have to do this by, by the end of the calendar year and fit it into the next three council meetings. Is that correct, Mr. City Manager? We can take a look at the timing. What I might recommend is if, if council wanted to, uh, to, defer it, to, to defer it to the budget um, um, deliberations next week because it is one of the budget items that will be brought forward. So if there are specific questions... Thank you, Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. City Manager. That's what I thought the tabling was going to be. It was actually postponed to the finance meeting. I didn't realize November 30th. So thank you for bringing that up. And thank you. That's my intent. So thank you, Mr. City Manager. Okay. So it would be tabled or postponed or... It'll be referred. It'll be referred to the budget debate. Is the intent of the motion? Thank you. Yes. Okay. All in favor of referral. Any opposed? Yes, Joe. Okay. I believe that's eight to one in favor of referral. It'll be referred to the budget debate. Okay. Okay. Uh, we've been meeting since 1.30. Uh, it's now 3.15. Uh, do you want to take a break for a few minutes and resume? Okay. We'll, we'll resume in 10 minutes.
Okay, we'll resume the city council meeting. We're going to move on to official business resolutions. Next item is 6.1. I'm going to ask Deputy Mayor Miyashiro to read the resolution. Uh, thank you, Mayor Spearman. This is an official business resolution for a zero property tax and utilities increase for 2021. Whereas the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak is having a significant impact on the city and its citizens, and whereas the city of Lethbridge taxpayers are facing financial hardship as a result of the COVID-19 outbreak, and whereas City Council approved the 2019-2022 City of Lethbridge operating budget with a 1.82% increase in 2020 for the municipal portion of the annual property tax, and whereas on May 11, 2020, City Council approved a one-time 0% incre increase municipal tax increase, uh, whereas City Council approved the 2019-2022 City of Lethbridge operating budget with a 2% increase in 2021 for water rates, and whereas City Council approved the 2019-2022 City of Lethbridge operating budget with a 2.5% increase in 2021 for wastewater rates, and whereas City Council approved the 2019-2022 City of Lethbridge operating budget with a 4% increase in 2021 for commercial garbage collection, therefore be resolved that the city manager be directed to amend the 2021 operating budget by eliminating the scheduled 3.64 municipal tax increase that includes 2020 and 2021, thereby reducing the tax increase to zero. And further be it resolved that the city manager be directed to amend the 2021 operating budget by eliminating the scheduled 2% rate increase for water utility, thereby reducing the water increase to zero and further be resolved that the city manager be directed to amend the 2021 operating budget by eliminating the scheduled 2.5% rate increase for the wastewater utility, thereby reducing the wastewater increase to zero, and further be resolved that the city manager be directed to amend the 2021 operating budget by eliminating the scheduled 4% rate increase for commercial garbage collection, thereby reducing the commercial garbage collection increase to zero. Mayor Spearman. Thank you. As we all know, uh, there are a number of challenges, uh, both to businesses and residents in the city of Lethbridge. Uh, we also know that uh, we've had presentations to city council previously about the level of our taxes. Uh, city council committed to uh, try to uh, address uh, the, uh, the level of municipal taxes in the city. And with that, we uh, undertook the uh, KPMG reviews, uh, those operational reviews uh, are complete, but we need to move forward and uh, demonstrate to uh, municipal, residential, and business taxpayers and municipal and residential utility uh, consumers uh, that we're serious and that we can uh, deliver. So uh, this is uh, the direction, and then uh, next week during the budget review, we would have to achieve these types of savings. So uh, working with the city manager, so here is the resolution that lays out the goal and the direction that increases in 2021 be zero. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have some questions from council. Yep, Councillor Parker. Mr. Mayor, I was just wondering, I think you kind of explained the logic. I thought that this would be a resolution you, re you would refer to the finance committee for debate and discussion. But uh, is there some logic why you would do it at a council meeting versus at a finance committee? I thought it was uh, basically to set the goal in the direction and it provides something uh, uh, that sets a goalpost for council as we review uh, opportunities next week. Thank you. Councillor Kaufman. Uh, thank you, Mayor Spearman. Um, same question as uh, Councillor Parker in terms of process. Um, uh, question uh, or obser observation in terms of not being a cut. This is a 0% increase basically across the board, correct? That's correct. Thank you. Um, to the city manager or designate, um, what this will do is this will push some of the uh, cost again further to the right. Um, do we have uh, an understanding of um, if we were to consider current levels of service in each of these areas, do we have an understanding as to what we would be looking at for uh, some form of um, 
financial parity or, or re realignment in the 2022 budget? Councillor Kaufman, I think that that um, would become apparent as council debated the, um, the various expenditure reduction options next week during the budget review to get to this target. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Spearman. Councillor Morrill. Thank you. Um, I too have similar thoughts as the uh, Council Parker and, and Council Kaufman. But my question is, there's four, um, therefore be it resolved, and they're all excellent. But my question is, what is the, and I'm going to send this to the city manager, what is the dollar value of all of these specific four, uh, therefore be it resolved? One deals with taxes, one deals with uh, water, one with waste, wastewater, and one with the uh, commercial garbage collection. What amount of money um, do these percentages, what do they equate to dollar value-wise? I'll defer it to the city treasurer who's busily <clears throat> looking for that information now. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, that's the only questions I have at this point. So if you have others that are in the queue while our treasurer is looking, that's good to go ahead. Okay, we'll move on to Councillor Carlson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Spearman. I appreciate you bringing this forward. Um, listening to my colleagues' discussion, not just on this, but on items 4.2 of 5.2, um, previous presentations and recommendations by um, the police commission, uh, our fee-for-service organizations, all of those were referred to our budget deliberations. Uh, so in the interest of, of uh, equity and uh, fairness and giving us the chance to sort of wade through everything um, in a proper format, I'd actually uh, like to make a referral motion for 6.1 and 6.2 they are both um, budget initiatives. I'd like to refer them both to our finance committees next week. I'll second that motion if uh, you need a seconder. Joe. Okay, so it's been uh, proposed by Councillor Carlson, seconded by Councillor Morrow to refer, I'll do them one at a time, 6.1. Debate these or not? Yeah, you can you can ask questions. You can debate. It's a referral motion, right? Well, I, I guess I want to ask the people that are in favor of referral is if they understand the reason to do it today. So the reason to, to do it today is so that an administration can take this away and make some um, recommendations, and and we can we have some targets for next week. And I think Mayor Spearman did say that. If we go in there with no targets and a free-for-all in every one of those items in our budget book, um, it'll be so difficult for us to make decisions because they, we have no, we have no grounding, and we have no baseline. Here, this is this creates our baseline. So this this motion does come forward because uh, our city manager asked for direction. So uh, this is a motion that provides direction. Okay. Councillor Carlson. Oh. Thanks, Mayor Spearman. I was just going to say that my referral motion is because we actually gave City Manager direction to present us with options uh, next week. We've received those options. Uh, I think it's incumbent on Council to go through those options and any others that may be coming forward, such as this and such as item 6.2, to try and work them into a budget. So I I think this isn't putting the, the cart behind the horse this is actually doing it properly to go through all of our budget next week and come to proper uh decisions so that's why I, i'd like to refer them okay councillor kaufman uh, i had a question but my question has been answered thank you okay acting mayor higgin thank you mayor spearman i i i do agree with having this uh, dealt with now as it does put us into uh, uh finance our finance meetings and our budget meetings already with a goal in mind of a zero percent tax increase which makes it much easier for us i shouldn't say easier that's the wrong word <laughs> it makes it uh, uh um, 
gives us more opportunity to, to look at these savings here as we ponder through uh, what uh, reductions that we would, we would need in order to make this work. So I, 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 I won't, is this questions? I guess it's debate. I won't be supporting this. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Parker. Um, no, we're just, are we in debate, Mr. Mayor, or are we in questions? Well, we're really in questions, but go ahead. Yeah, so I'll, I'll hold up, I'll hold up. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, City Treasurer, I believe you have an answer for Councillor Morrow. Uh, Mayor Spearman, through to Councillor Morrow. Uh, on the 9th, uh, we presented this information and we talked about the uh, 0% uh, for taxes is approximately $6 million. Um, so, sorry, Mr. Westerson, can you just bring up that um, resolution so I can just go in that order? I don't know that I did them in the right order. Um, so the so the whereas clause clause that talks about the 3.64 municipal tax increase. Um, so that's approximately six million dollars. Um, sorry, it's just moving around a bit here. Um, the second clause, which talks about the 2% for water, that's roughly um, $400,000. The 2.5% um, for wastewater is appro also approximately $400,000. And the commercial garbage collection is approximately $36,000. So $6,836,000 in total. I, I just wouldn't recommend that you combine those because oh. they are tax and utilities. So. Exactly. <laughs> <Thank> yeah. <you. laughs> that, that's the answer to Councillor Morrow's question. Okay. Councillor Kaufman. Thank you, Mayor Spearman. To the city manager, uh, actually, yeah, to the city manager. Um, as uh, Councillor Carlson's identified, uh, we gave you the instruction several weeks ago looking at a 5% reduction, 10% re reduction. That was a presentation that was given to Finance Committee last Monday. Uh, this then would be on top of that or is this in place of or is this uh, providing you with the tool with which to do it? The, the way I viewed the 5%, 10% reduction exercise was um, um, sort of the the um, the logic for us to go through each program area in the city and look at what a 5% and 10% reduction would look like to develop options for council to bring forward towards whatever target council had set so those those 5% and 10% were not were not targets per se to be achieved they were merely to drive that work and so the work out of that 5% 10% reduction exercise along with a couple of other um, items for council will be brought forward to finance committee next week the, um, the, the issue is whether or not finance, as I see it, is whether or not finance committee starts with a clear target in mind next week and works through those options to reach their target um, or if they just go in and start working through those options. And I, in terms of, of supporting council next week, I, I would be in favor of, of council having a target at the outset. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. Any further questions? Okay, you can move on to debate. Councillor Morrow. Morrow? Uh, for question, Mr. Mayor, is okay still? Go ahead. To the city manager. Um, <clears throat> sorry, Mr. Manager, I, can you explain to me how this resolution here today is going to help you for next week. Wouldn't this be, shouldn't this be part of, you, you say you want to hit a target. Well, then why don't we consider all other resolutions that have targets if we want to send you off so that you know what our target is? It seems like we're just picking this to what Councillor uh, Carlson was indicating earlier about many others that have been referred. So explain to me so that I understand how this is helping you more now than it would next Monday. Well, I, th I think it'll help us, but I think it'll more so help council know um, what the challenge is when they sit down next week. Having a clear target at the outset 
um, having a clear target in mind as you consider those other things that have been referred, um, including the 5%, 10% reduction work, just seems to me to be a much more logical way to approach the week and would probably make the conversation um, a little more focused. So rather than going into a conversation not knowing what you're trying to achieve, I would think it would be better to go in with a clear target in mind. And you may find during that conversation that that target is on, you know, on the mark or off the mark, but I, I think it's helpful to, to know what you're trying to achieve before you start. And so my, my question again to you, so then basically what I'm hearing you say is that we are setting a target, but we are just using these four particular uh, uh, whatever you want to call them. We're picking four, the water, wastewater, commercial garbage, and taxes. What about other targets? What about other stuff? Why wouldn't they be discussed as well then? I think these are the main, th that, that's a good question for council. I think these are the, the areas, both um, taxes and utility rates that council's focused on. So I think that these cover the broad areas that were meant to be addressed next week. But again, I think that's a, 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 a better question for council. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, so there has been a referral motion by Councillor Carlson and seconded by Councillor Morrow. Morrow. Okay, all in favor of referral. We'll do a roll call. This is for item 6.1. 6 6.1, yeah. I, I did make it for item six one and six two. I'm not sure why it got changed. I did I did it arbitrarily so we could. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm. Sorry. Yeah, we that haven't that had point, any discussion on six two. That's all. Yeah. To that point, Councillor Carlson made the a referral of six point one six point two. Okay. I second it. I don't think it's uh, fair that you, Mr. Mayor, just get to pick and choose whatever wording goes into that. That'd give it a whirl. It, okay. If you want to change 6.2 and get it out of there, then I think we should have that as a vote amongst all members of council. Okay, we can say it's 6.1 and 6.2. Go for it. I, a question I have, though, is, so are we going to be discussing 6.2? Because we went through everything on 6.1, and this motion to refer without discussion on 6-2 is just, I just need to, to know if that's... That was my concern. Yes. Yeah. We've, we've had a lot of discussion on 6-1, nothing on 6-2. Yeah. I'm just wanting for fairness. Yeah, I, I agree. But okay. there, Thanks, it, it is their resolution. Councillor Carlson's asked for referral. Uh, Councillor Morrow has seconded it. So uh, any further questions? Can we move on to debate? Okay, it includes 6-1 and 6-2. Uh, who's in, okay, roll call, please. Councillor Campbell. Opposed. Councillor Carlson. In favor. Councillor Kaufman. Opposed. Councillor Croson. Opposed. Councillor Morrow. In favor. Councillor Parker. Opposed. Acting Mayor Higgin. Opposed. Deputy Mayor Miyashiro. Opposed. Mayor Spearman. Opposed. That is lost, uh, seven to two. Okay, so now we're back to discussing 6.1, the, the original resolution. Any further questions? Okay. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Uh, just a, a question on process, uh, Councillor Carlson here. Um, if this is approved before we go into budget and say we work through all of budget week <clears throat> and it comes back that we, um, because people are really attached to wastewater rotting or something of the like, that we need a 0.1% uh, or council does their due diligence and we find a 0.1% one percent uh, decrease 
uh, how do we move forward process wise? Or once we hit the zero targets, do we just stop for the day? Yep, it's a target, uh, provides direction and comfort levels if people want to continue. I guess there could be a, a vote taken at that time to continue the process. That's my answer. Acting Mayor Higgin. <laughs> well, in, in, sorry, if, are you finished, Councillor Carlson, before I ask my question? I, I think that was my question. I'm just not sure if we've already approved all of these. Um, do, but we don't achieve it next week because somebody really loves sewer rotting um, or something uh, of the like or uh, PSCC. Uh, employees need to be added. Um, I'm curious how how we then go back. We can't. If we pass this today, you can't unilaterally vote against it next week because you'd feel like it. I, right? I if we say we're going to do a 0% on whatever, we can't change that in Finance Committee next week when Council's already told Finance Committee this needs to be a 0%. Is so that we can't... We can't even find. If this is asking the city manager to do things, we can override the city manager in budget deliberations. I'm sorry, Councillor Croson. I didn't hear what you said. I want to mention that this is asking the city manager to find these zero percent across the board and bring that to us next week. This does not mean we have to bring a 0% because we can override as council anything brought forward by the city manager. So to Councillor Carlson's concerns, what we do next year, would be, next week is guided by this and the city manager's work is guided by this, but we are not, would not, as this resolution reads, we are not saying we must have zero. We're saying the city manager will bring us stuff to have zero and then we still deliberate next week. Okay, thank you for that. And I just want to ensure that that's, that's the message being sent, that this is the direction to city manager to present a budget based on this. Because I asked this last week. Uh, I asked city manager, uh, are you going to present recommendations? And I was told no. Um, but this, if this is passed, then yes, is what I'm hearing. The city manager will bring recommendations on how to achieve this. Point of order, Mr. Mayor, that's not what the resolution says. I totally agree with Councillor Carlson. If we pass this resolution in my mind, that's what me counts that's what's gonna happen. It doesn't say that the city manager is coming back. This is it. We're sending we're sending the city manager and finance committee with this mandate, period. Yep. Together we're going to, uh, that's the idea is to set the target to achieve it. So direct, we have to work on that together. But basically, uh, we've gone through the 5 and 10% exercise. It's identified where the opportunities are. But the goal is not to achieve 5% or 10%. It's to achieve a 3.64% reduction on taxes uh, in order to have a zero increase for next year. And similarly, in... Uh, in water, wastewater, and the waste collection utility. Acting Mayor Higgin. Thank you. So a question I have then. So on this, if there's a way that we could find more so we can reduce the taxes from below zero, if we have this, we could not do that? This is one target. Any councillor can bring a resolution if they think there's something they... I mean, during during the budget del deliberations, what I'm more talking about is is this is set in stone. If for some reason we can find that there's a one percent reduction, we could not. I just I, I think we would have the flexibility, but uh, this sets a clear target uh, to work towards. Can can I get? I don't know if a city solicitor could uh, speak to that or or city clerk. I see if your if hand. it gets passed today and there's um, different direction, you'd have to reconsider this decision. And it would require like a two-thirds vote to reconsider this decision if you want to change 
the percentage in the future. So if, if we wanted even more of a, a reduction, we would have two thirds would have to agree? Correct. Thank you. Any further questions? I hear none. Can we go on to debate on 6.1? I think I've already opened. Last councillors. Councillor Carlson. Thank you, Mr. Spurman. Um, if I'm now understanding correctly, uh, I may change my mind and support this uh, resolution. Uh, last week, I did ask the city manager if he was going to come back with a recommendation on how to achieve um, or how best to achieve um, our, our uh, goals to accomplish the 5% or 10% or what's necessary. If this gives the city manager enough direction to go ahead and bring back a budget that is based on this, um, it, it should save us a lot of work next week. I was looking forward to council diving in, doing our, our due diligence, our best work, uh, and trying to achieve the best for our community. Uh, and I didn't want to go into it hamstrung, whether we could achieve more than our targets, or in order to keep the community uh, um, satisfied, happy, and, and enjoying the services provided, we may not be able to achieve exactly what we were all hoping for, but that would be in response to community requests and community input and community desire, because we are stewards of the community for the community. So I was prepared to not support this um, because I think it could hamstring us and our discussions and deliberations next week. Um, but if this will instruct the city manager to go and give his best um, work on how we could achieve this, then I, I will support this resolution. Thank you. Uh, Mr. City Manager. Thank you. Just to, in response to Councillor Carlson's comments, this, so this would, um, from my perspective, what we would do next week is we would support um, Councillor Miyashiro in sharing this by presenting the information in a way that, that would be focused on Council achieving these targets. We wouldn't bring a budget forward per se. We would say, for example, that if Council accepted all of the base amendments and all of the low impact, then an additional X would need to be found to achieve these targets, and we would start with the medium impact in an order of priority. So Council would still be digging into the, the options that have been identified to a degree, to, to the degree that they wish. Um, when I saw this, it was simply, you know, what, what are we trying to achieve next week? What target is it that Council has in mind? Or is it indeed um, the intent of Council to go through each and every 5%, 10% budget reduction initiative? And I think it's a better use of Council's time, council's time probably to do the former, but I understand where the concern comes from. But, but I, I, my intent, or certainly when I read, read that, I don't see us going away and coming forward with a budget, given the amount of time we have between now and next week. It was just being able to shape Council's discussions next week to help them um, get to whatever target they want to set. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Acting Mayor Higgin. Thank you, and uh, thank you for that explanation, Mr. City Manager. Uh, I, I just, it, it, it's my hope, I will be supporting this resolution as it gives some, some direction. I, I do agree that if there's, if something comes forward that we can, we can realize even a uh, larger, uh, uh, even, even a larger decrease in, in taxation to below zero, if that does come forward, it would, it sounds like we could still go through with that and be able to, support that in, a, in a, uh, a budget initiative. So I will be supporting this and I thank you for bringing it forward. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, we'll do the roll call. I'll simply 
uh, close by saying this does provide clarity and direction both to the city manager and to council and sets a target. Uh, so uh, that, I think that'll be helpful in terms of uh, the budget discussions next week. So with that, uh, if we can do the roll call. Councillor Campbell. In favor. Councillor Carlson. In favor. Councillor Kaufman. In favor. Councillor Croson. In favor. Councillor Morrow. Favor. Councillor Parker. In favor. Acting Mayor Hagan. In favor. Deputy Mayor Miyashiro. In favor. Mayor Spearman. In favor. Okay, that is unanimous. Now we'll move on to 6.2. And it's 3.59. <laughs> I think we're gonna go to the public hearings and then, and then we will come back to 6.2. Okay, I have a resolution from Councillor Morrow uh, that we do now recess to the public hearing. Councillor Morrow. Question. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. That carries eight to one. Do I have speaking notes for this evening? I should have. Yeah. My service all I got mine, right. mine all over this, so it's all good.
I call the public hearing for bylaw 6251, a bylaw to establish alternate methods of public notification and adver advertisement. The procedure for this will hearing will be, we will begin by calling upon Ryan Westerson, Manager of Legislative Services to provide the background to the case. Those else wishing to speak on this bylaw will then be called upon. We will then ask three times if there is anybody else who wishes to make a presentation. City Council will then have the opportunity to ask questions of any of the presenters. The hearing will then be closed. Consideration of second and third reading will be made by City Council immediately following the public hearing. I now call upon Mr. Ryan Westerson to provide the background to the case. Thank you. Uh, you've received this ahead of time, so we will be brief. Uh, representatives of Legislative Services and Planning and Development behind me are here as well for a little bit of backup, and we're going to discuss the merits of the uh, aforementioned bylaw. Maybe this won't work from here. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, currently, the city corporate spends close to $100,000 a year on the provision of notice in accordance with Section 606 of the MGA. In focusing on the merits of this bylaw, it's important to note that by no means will this bylaw release the city from providing notice to the community. Rather, it will allow the notice, the notice process sorry, to continue in a manner that will allow administration to, one, save costs, and two, fluidly respond to the need to provide notice. We should note that the current requirements of the MGA require notice to be published in at least one newspaper or other publication circulating in Lethbridge for at least once a week on two consecutive weeks. Currently, the city provides notices of our services, programs, and projects, and other information through a variety of different methods. The MGA, MGA requires administration to notify the public about certain types of meetings, events, decisions, and actions. Until recently, print advertising was the primary method used by Alberta's municipalities to meet this in demand. Uh, a, a quick little uh, side note to the city of Chestermere is a current and relevant example of a municipality that lost its local newspaper. While most newspapers are adapting, the nature of information consumption and access is rapidly and continuously changing. In the uh, enclosed report, there's a note there about the, uh, the city's website is visited approximately 30,000 times a month with about uh, 7,500 of those a weekly. The city's Twitter and Facebook pages have approximately 21,000, 18,000 followers respectively. And in 2019, according to Statistics Canada, overall, 94% of Canadians have access to in-home internet. Uh, that's brief examples that we utilize to develop this bylaw. The AUMA has put out a guideline, a guiding document that their member municipalities have access to. And then we utilize the City, by City of Edmonton bylaw 18826 in 2019, which was passed in 2019 in Edmonton. And it was a best practice template that we utilized. Approval of this bylaw will provide administration the ability to utilize additional methods similar to those already used to inform the public about our services, programs, projects, and other information. A consolidated web page has been stood up at lethbridge.ca slash notices to consolidate all of the notices and advertisements that are required by the MGA. This page will link to all well-established web pages, such as the public hearings page. Uh, uh, over the course of the last 365 days, there's been a number of land use bylaw amendments in that page uh, that we've advertised with an approximate viewership of about 1,400 individuals. Administration plans to implement the changes gradually so that the public who uses newspapers as a source of information are made aware of the transition before it occurs. And additionally, and where appropriate, administration will continue to utilize the newspaper and other print advertising to supplement the electronic advertisement process. Uh, we, this will take the form through the uh, weekly smaller notices being directed to, or directing readers, sorry, to the appropriate location on the city's website. It will be maintained throughout the transition process and for continued time frame afterwards, somewhere in the range of approximately two years. And with that, I bring it to a close. Okay, Acting Mayor Higgin. Thank you, Mayor Spearman. I'm just, a question that I have is, uh, I know there's a lot of people who do not use social media and uh, computers for that case. And so I know I understand, and thank you for this, this presentation, that I, there's, there's a lot that we're going to be going into, for example, the, the print media saying, go to this website to get more information. Now, anytime something like this has come up as far as, as notices in the paper, um, I spoke to a lot, especially those senior in our, in our, uh, in our city, 
mm -hmm. that have said, I don't use a computer. This is the way it's always, and they call it, I get my rag and that's, that's what I, that's where I get all my information. They do not have computers, a lot of them. So we can steer them that direction, but unfortunately, a lot of times they will not get that information. So I've, I've just wondered, how is it that, uh, so the savings is completely through, through newspaper print is where that you'd realize those savings? Correct. Okay, because, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that, thank you. Hey. Before, before we go any further, I'm just gonna go through uh, the formality of the hearing process. I'm just gonna ask, uh, even though every chair in the chamber is empty, is there any member of the public that wishes to make a presentation on this matter? Is there any member of the public that wishes to make a presentation on this matter? And for a third and final time, is there any member of the public that wishes to make a presentation on this matter? Okay, hearing no other presenters, it's now time for council to ask questions of the presenters. Councillor Kaufman. Uh, thank you, Mayor Spearman. I don't know if one of Councillor Hagen wants to go again or not, but uh, mm -hmm. um, um, thank you, uh, Mr. Westerson, for, for uh, the work on this, the presentation. A uh, couple of questions. First of all, do we have um, the realize this is something that residents set up but through our technology within the organization do we have the ability to establish uh, the notifications page as uh, a link for an RSS feed whereby someone could actually just subscribe to the page and any updates or changes they would be automatically notified yes sir we do uh, and that that is actually being discussed right now with regards to lethbridge.ca slash notices something that currently is enabled on the city's website on the the news feed uh, as well uh, of note uh, potentially and this is under investigation with our current meeting management system but there is opportunities with potentially that system or additional systems in the future to have rss feeds built into those as well so there will be that compounded effort okay thank you um i know that part of the concern coming from elements of the community obviously is, is access to technology and and well, the national stats are there. Um, it certainly there is a demographic that does still subscribe to uh, to newspapers and doesn't necessarily follow the the, the technology. Um, when we're talking about the savings for um, cost and print media, uh, it and I, I apologize for not asking for this on the weekend when I was reading through this. Um, but is there a, a, an idea of a template? There's there an idea of what information will still be provided? especially in the area of um, public hearings around zoning, information that will still be provided in the newspaper? Or is it, it's gonna be a public hearing, go to the website and see what it's about? Yeah, there, there's been some discussion about that, not necessarily a template that's been created right now, um, but insofar as we'll probably skinny down or shrink down the current ad, which explains where the, the, the public hearing is gonna occur uh, and kind of the process to get in contact with the, the clerk's office and or other offices for information but it'll identify the, the topic or the item that is to be considered at that uh, subsequent public hearing, or if it's a resolution or notice of motion, the, the, the content therein. Uh, but we'll also direct those individuals, like you said, to the public website, the date in which that hearing is to occur, and maybe a brief synopsis, two, three sentences of that, uh, that item. Uh, current uh, advertisements are in excess of uh, several, sorry. Uh, the cost of current advertisements, the way we have them for public hearings, uh, based on 2019 numbers, uh, range anywhere between uh, 1000 and $2,000, depending on the size of the ad and the formatting. Um, if we were to cut it down, uh, that would reduce the cost of any given ad to anywhere between uh, 700 all the way down to $200 per ad. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Ms. Crisanti, for that clarification. Appreciate that. Um, is the um, advertising then that we do through print media, is it um, provided through one office, through one, um, uh, one window out, or does each department advertise uh, its, uh, directly? So does planning advertise the zoning, um, does clerk's office advertise public notices, things of that nature? It's a bit of a coordinated effort. However, most of the, the advertising is coordinated through the clerk's office to the, the Herald currently. Okay, for consistency of, of information, I hope. 
Um, final question. Um, section four, uh, where we uh, says the general section, uh, 4.1a. Uh, 4.1a1 says um, where the thing is of a uh, general nature to the entire city, solely by publication of the required notice on the website. Um, what's the reason for something that is actually citywide to be solely published on the website and not to do it through uh, various uh, uh, media sources or various information sources, I should state? Uh, this was an addition um, to the original drafts of the bylaw. The um, The language there, uh, and council is free to amend this when it comes for second or third hearing. Um, the language of solely, uh, um, uh, 4A reads, except for uh, where otherwise specified in this bylaw. And then uh, section 41C says that in addition to the advertising uh, pursuant to 41A, the city can also use other methods. And then uh, section 41D, Advertising methods are at the discretion of the city manager. So uh, that language of solely, um, it is possible that some clarification could be added to uh, so that uh, solely uh, lethbridge.ca slash notices meets our legislative requirements. Then the city manager may, or delegate, may choose to advertise using those other methods. Um, the plan moving forward has been to use a diversity of methods. Um, just saying that we meet our minimum standard at Lethbridge.ca uh, slash notices just lets us uh, reduce the size of newspaper ads. We would still continue uh, advertising through, depending on the item, uh, radio, newsletters, mail, um, any other sort of method that is uh, deemed appropriate for the item being advertised. Uh, thank you. Yes, my concern does uh, revolve uh, in part around the word solely because uh, um, C is if so desired, uh, as opposed to um, if you so don't desire, you can just simply publish on the on the website. So uh, for me, it's very much about uh, creating opportunities. I think Mr. Westerson described it in his presentation as being additional methods. Um, solely makes it about alternative methods, and that's a bit concerning just in the language. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Brown. Councillor Carlson. Thank you, Mayor Spearman. Uh, thank you, Ms. Crisanti and Mr. Westerson for uh, the, the presentation and answering the questions. Can I ask, uh, what was driving this um, proposal or, or uh, amendment? Uh, a few different options. Uh, one of which being uh, probably most timely currently with uh, Finance Week next week was a, a cost reduction exercise. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and Ms. Gehring is here to speak more more holistically to how it'll affect uh, her business unit, but there are a multitude of business units that'll be affected, not necessarily in a, a large number, um, but the uh, planning and development will des definitely see the larger uh, portion of the benefits for this. Uh, and second is, is an option um, for council uh, to enact for administration to, to expand the ways in which we, we currently do things, uh, to looking to be a bit more potentially modernized and or um, increasing the, the information flow and transparency of that information toward the, through, towards the public. Thank you, I appreciate those responses. I, I do think we do need to try and be more responsive, more modern uh, in, in the ways we do things. I also appreciate the budget uh, initiative. We're, um, we just uh, in council passed a resolution giving us a target and I don't know how far this will get us to our target uh, but I appreciate the work being done. Do we know, um, it, I think it said we were to save about $90,000 a year. Is that just in one budget or is that across the corporation? Across the corporation. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Spearman. Thank you. Acting Mayor Higgin. Thank you very much, Mayor, thank you very much, Mayor Spearman. Um, I, last time I checked, and I don't know if somebody can ask this question, that close to 40% of uh, our community do not have digital digital access. And so I'm curious to know, does, when, when you're going about looking through this, did you, do you have a number of what percentage that, uh, or is that anything that was looked into? I just, the reason I ask that is it seems like we're kind of putting the onus on the, the, the citizen to get the information rather than, than giving them the information 
uh, uh, just up front. And so I'm just curious to know if, oh, Councilor Mishur, do you have a number? Okay. Take your mic down. The internet use um, survey by StatsCan in 2018 showed 94.1% of Albertans had access to the internet. When you break that down by region, one second, you break it down by region and they broke it down to the prairie provinces and then even look at a, a, a smaller subgroup of people that are 65 years and over. Um, and this is across the prairies and there's a higher usage in Alberta than there is across the prairies. 80.1% of all seniors have access to internet at home. So it's not 20% of the, the population doesn't have it, it's 80% uh, of seniors do have access in the prairies and I would assume that's higher. Not only that, but um, uh, over 70%, 71% have a smartphone for personal use which they could also use to, to gain the access to the internet. So 20% do not then, by the sounds of it. 20% of seniors, not 20% of, of the population. Of seniors, and, and, and I know that a lot that do deal with this and do uh, have concerns, they, that's where they go to their local newspaper for that. So I'm just curious to know what that percentage, so 20% of seniors. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Morrow. Thank you. In the uh, <clears throat> document's presentation, it says the proposed bylaw will result in decreased cost, increased flexibility and efficiency within the organization, preparation for changes in media as formats continue to change, and enhancement to our current service to the public. Uh, when I read that, I'm thinking, are we looking at this from our perspective or if I'm Joe Citizen out there, would I would I agree with this statement? Thank you, Councillor. Uh, I'll answer that on two two fronts. There, uh, first and foremost, yes. Uh, internally, we we looked at this as a as a corporate look. How do we be more efficient? How do we do things a little bit better? How do we reduce some of our costs? Uh, second, and a bit of a an answer to Councillor Higgins' former question with regards to. How would anybody come in and receive this? Those that don't necessarily have access, the 20% of seniors or the 6% of Canadians that don't necessarily have access to internet where they could find this on our, our current website that we've stood up for this, are welcome to come into City Hall at any time in continuation of any process that we currently do, do use and to access any of the documents that we uh, to, uh, have for a public hearing, that we provide for notice. Uh, to, so th this is a will be a, a, actually a, a very similar process uh, to for the announcement of council meetings for uh, an entire year. Uh, council several weeks ago, two weeks ago, actually uh, approved the 2021 council calendar. It's not something that we have published in the, the, the newspaper, to my recollection, having been in this office for just shy of four years, uh, but is something that we do holistically and always put on the website. Uh, and so, uh, our citizenry is informed of, of those meetings, uh, but we will have the, these documents, this information readily available, as is currently uh, stated in all of the, the ads that do go out for inspection in the Office of City Clerk. Thanks for that. I'm, <clears throat> I'm not sure if, if I heard um, one of my questions or part of my question being answered. Sorry. So how does, I just, I, I want to give you an opportunity to explain to me how does this benefit me as Joe Citizen out there? And I'll, t I'll tell you why. Also in the conclusion section of the presentation, <clears throat> excuse me, it says one of the goals of this bylaw is to increase transparency and openness of communication with the city's residents. We know we get criticized of that a lot, that we're not transparent and we're not open. And so what I'm sensing here and what I'm thinking is that we once again now we're taking away another method of being transparent and communicating. That's why I asked the question earlier. So from, from Joe Citizen's perspective, how will this make it better for me as a citizen? I think that's a, uh, a subjective answer. Uh, uh, it, it would be... This will enable individuals to currently use the technology that's available to them, or if they're not available to them, they're not necessarily going to see anything differently. 
Uh, as stated in the presentation, we, we're not going to holist or just stop uh, carte blanche uh, advertising in the newspaper. We're going to do maybe skinny ads and or smaller ads pushing. Uh, this is a, an endeavor that's been experienced in other municipalities, and albeit we are the city of Lethbridge, uh, and we are not necessarily reliant upon what other municipalities are doing. This is something that's being adopted across the province currently, and is currently enjoyed by other municipalities across the country as well. Uh, on, on top of that, uh, and again, as has been stated a few times, we will, uh, in the Office of City Clerk, I'm sure across and many other business units, continue to support and continue to have that information readily available. Council Morrow, okay. if I can add, sorry, it's Bonnie here. Um, the flexibility will give planning with regards to their bylaws, their maps, the ability to put the color maps on the web, the reports, they'll have more information that people could access on the web. And it will be, you know, in color and more detailed and such. So I think that was the flexibility that we meant in that report. And as Ryan did say, the ad would have the name of the bylaw, the address. So if somebody wanted to call us, we would provide a paper copy if they, if they so wanted that as well. Okay, I'm assuming we're doing that right now, though, are we not? We are doing that, yeah. Okay, so, so I'm trying to understand the only significant change if we proceed with this, uh, uh, with this uh, bylaw change or whatever it is that we're, yeah. Um, the only thing that I, he, that I see, and correct me if I'm wrong, help me out, is instead of putting everything in the paper, we will put our information on where to access what we would now normally put in the paper. So we're just telling the people, go look here. This is where the information is. Is that the only change that I'm seeing or that I'm hearing? Yeah, it would be a reduced amount of information in the paper. So it would be a re reduced cost, but it would still have the name of the bylaw. It would have the address so that if it does have an interest in people, that they would uh, either go to the web and if they don't have web access, they could contact us and we'll get them a paper copy. Um, yeah, so just reduced information on, on in the ad that would be on the web. Thank you. Councillor Kaufman. Thank you, Mayor Spearman. Um, I think I heard you say that Ms. Gehring is there. I'm just wondering if she could possibly just come to the microphone just to get a, a structural or a functional understanding of um, what it's going to look like. I don't know if um, Ms. Crisanti, if you could call up uh, attachment three that's in the package. I don't know if you have the ability to do that from where you're at. If not, that's okay. Apologize for the additional work and for not giving you the heads up on that. And maybe just while that's calling um, coming up, um, um, Ms. Helford, just in your response to Councillor Morrow um, when he asked about what are you currently doing, these are processes that you're currently following. Uh, the issue is it's not been codified, correct? Regards to um, public being uh, able regards, to... yes, yeah, and and various uh, advertising uh, methods since Bill twenty or twenty one, a couple of legislative sessions ago, when we had the ability to actually advertise in other forms and formats, uh, we've been we've been actually doing that since that time. We're just uh, codifying it now, correct? Um, I think we're on the web. Maureen, is that yes? She's shaking her head yes. Okay, yeah, thank you. We've been doing website ads for four or five years now. Excellent, thank you. Maybe we'll, we're just um, uh, waiting, and I don't know if it can be called up or not. Um, Ms. Gehring, will there be a, a, a change then in um, what a development permit um, advertisement would look like in the newspaper? So 
right now we're looking at the little box. It's got the land use bylaw, uh, the bylaw number there, and then it identifies North Avenue streets, South Avenues and streets, West Avenues and streets, and the appeal process. Does that format change or um, is that the basic information that we would see appearing on uh, in, in, in print media? So we would be looking to shorten that up, uh, Councillor Kaufman, and we haven't developed a template for that yet, but that is one of the reasons um, why directing people to the website would be beneficial. So yeah, we wouldn't have a listing there particularly. We haven't worked with city clerks on what that might look like, but definitely making those ads much shorter is what we would be looking at. Okay, thank you. And thank you very much, uh, um, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Crisanti, for getting that up. Uh, so if we look at that uh, development permit ad that's right there, um, you're saying that you wouldn't have the, uh, the addresses attached. It would be more of a, there's zonings? So again, Councillor Kaufman, we haven't worked out what it would look like. Um, that particular ad, considering how many lines of text there is, um, if we could shorten it up to where we see City of Lethbridge and then development permits, like if we could shrink it by 25%, that would mm -hmm. be beneficial for us. So perhaps we would just have the addresses but not the detailed information. Every okay. line of, of text costs us money, right? So. In terms of trying to save some of the money, that's what we would be looking at. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there any desire, uh, perhaps this is Mr. to Mr. Westerson then, is there any desire to um, create templates as um, 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 appendix or appendices to this bylaw? So again, that there's a consistency, there's an understanding by everybody as to what they would look like? Uh, as Maureen said, or Ms. Gehring has said, sorry, it's something that we haven't necessarily looked at what those uh, potential templates could look like. However, in in all efforts to be as as open, as clear and consistent with what we do, that may be something that would uh, be beneficial to look at. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor Spring. Acting Mayor Higgin. Yes, a question, I don't know if the city manager or is the designate can answer this. Will 311 uh, in this way that this goes, will 311 have an understanding? So if somebody did call out 311 to ask about these questions, they will be trained on this? Yes. Yes, they will. So, so I'm just looking at, there's, there's going to be some, some additional costs internally with the corporation, I would imagine, because with uh, a training and, and obviously our staff is quite busy at the time, and so to add this additional thing, is that not going to create a, a concern as well? I would say from a 311 perspective, no, because that, 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 that is what they do and they'll continue to have to bring on um, more items and be aware of more items of information they have to make available to the public. So I don't see that from a 311 perspective, but there may be other. No more staffing requirements for this. It's just gonna do more with the current staff mm -hmm. that we've got. Thank you. Uh, next question. Uh, we have a lot of legal notices that go out and then have to be repeated, I think two times if I'm not mistaken. How do we deal with that? You'll see actually, and what's on the screen right now is the, I believe that's the notice actually for this bylaw. Uh, currently on the right hand side, the far right hand side, that is the length and depth and breadth of the, the present, or the ads that we currently do in the Herald with regards to a land use amendment. Uh, it's, uh, we took that format uh, for this, this bylaw in particular, just to, to be a little bit consistent with what, what that looked like. But, uh, and sorry, Councillor Higgin, I don't know if I answered your question a little bit or what's that gonna look like on the web? So you'd be too, I mean, you have to hit them up, hit them up, maybe it's not the right word, but the advertisement has to be- Two consecutive two weeks. Yeah. Two consecutive, so, so you'll put that on online and then you'll just re S refresh them that it's online again? In, in the paper. And then what we would do is keep that, maintain that, that uh, current website posting. Uh, for an extended period of time, I believe we've, we've noted somewhere in the, the tune of uh, from first first reading of the bylaws is about four weeks. So what we would do is we'd probably post that right after the first reading, and it would be up there on the website live and until second and third reading, or council determines to do something additional or different with that bylaw. Is there a communication strategy that we have, I guess, as far going forward to those that? are just going to see, go to your computer, or are we gonna be doing a lot more advertising? You can call this number, you can do this, the different ways that they'll be able to access this information? Yes. That will happen, or yep. is it just going to direct them to the website? 
definitely. It'll be, it'll be more of a directional to this lethbridge.ca slash notices, but there will be a bit of an informational communication campaign. And as noted in the presentation over the, the next two years at least, uh, t to kind of move towards that. We have a cost for what that campaign is? I, I think what we said, we, we expect uh, in the presentation there, I think it said bringing down to those skinnier ads uh, it's, is going to make a savings of approximately $88,000. That's even including the, 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 the cost to actually do the implementation and to, to uh, um, advertise this new process. Marketing, I guess, for that. Yes. Thank you. Councillor Morrill. Thank you. Um, I thought that when we were dealing with advertising for development permits, such as what's up on the screen, I thought that that was paid for by the, the person applying for the development permit. So that would not be, don't we, don't we pass on those costs to the individual or whoever it is that, that is applying for these development permits? So, Councillor Morrow, that's a good question. We do have an advertising fee. However, with each um, with each one of these ads that we put in, we're losing between two hundred and four hundred dollars a week. So, even well, so though even though we are charging the applicant, it's not covering our costs in the Herald. Okay, so <laughs> that's kind of where I was going. To me, this I think we're going in the opposite direction. If we want to communicate and be more transparent, why don't we go bigger and charge? whatever it costs so that we recoup our, our, our costs. Has that, has that been a consideration? That seems to be the, the theme of, of, uh, of, of everything that we're trying to do is recoup our costs. Why wouldn't we do this with it? Why wouldn't we do this with this particular, in this situation? So Councillor well, Morrill, that's a good question as well. Um, I guess there, it is a balance. So in terms of development costs, right? So if other municipalities are moving towards more of an online and they can charge cheaper <coughs> fees so they don't have to charge for advertising, that makes our community more expensive to develop in if we're, again, charging the applicant for advertising. So that is a balance that you do have to consider. But that's the cost of doing business, is it not? Yeah, but if there is a way that we can make doing business in Lethbridge a little bit easier and more attractive, that is something that we investigate. Okay, but you haven't considered that as an option? Uh, that was not, not the, the direction for budget cutting to raise fees, no. Thank you. Are there any more questions from councillors? Uh, Mayor Spearman, Councillor Kaufman. Okay, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, to Mr. Westerson, I'm assuming. Um, because... I'm sensing uh, there are members of council who have some concerns about uh, the information that's going to be made public still in, in print form. Is it possible, or what does it do in terms of time and process and whatnot, to um, ask you to come back with a template of what we would be seeing? Again, so there's some form of consistency. I don't want to get into the weeds. Our job is policy. But I think if we're going to be passing a policy that talks about providing information to the community and understanding uh, so that we all know, uh, and by all I mean council, by staff, by the community, we all know what information is being presented uh, and how it's being presented uh, remains consistent across the organization and consistent within the community. Um, is that an overly cumbersome and labor intensive um, uh, task? Was this something you were planning on doing after the bylaw was passed? Two, two responses there. Uh, to first, uh, the original direction and the, the recommended action for the, the bylaw that was provided first reading back in the start of October, or October 19th, I believe, sorry, uh, was that these, these cost reductions be forwarded to uh, the, the budget meetings next week uh, to, uh, for council's consideration in there. Uh, and two, uh, I don't believe that to be a labor-intensive process or project, uh, but uh, we stand to be directed either which way. Uh, thank you. The concern isn't on the uh, cost savings. I uh, uh, acknowledge and appreciate what's being done in terms of uh, being creative. Uh, it's about um, providing a, a, a greater 
understanding, a greater appreciation, a greater uh, recognition of the consistency as to how things are going to be presented so that everybody knows, uh, so that we don't have different departments responding in different ways to uh, the way things are put in the media. So if that's not going to be an overly cumbersome uh, issue, it's something that you're going to be addressing. Um, maybe we'll look at that as an amendment then to the uh, second reading. Thank you. Acting Mayor Higgin. Uh, one of my last questions, all these things keep popping up. Has there been any discussion even with our, our uh, I guess it would be mainly be the Herald or there would be other, other uh, newsprint out there. Has there been discussion to sit down with some other opportunities or, or options that maybe they would have out there or is it just, has there, I guess main thing, has there been any discussion with, with uh, the Herald or Sun Times or wherever else that this, this is being advertised? Uh, not at this current time. However, it was just a, it's brought forward as a as a, a potential cost reduction initiative. Again, we'll reiterate and uh, something that's been available to council to do for the last number of years. Um, if if a meeting with the Herald or other uh, newspaper uh, providers in the community would be preference. Do you, have, do you know what other so it's the Herald and what other uh, newspapers do these have to be? Uh, uh, Top of my head, I think there's a. Sunny South News, but I believe that's more of a rural municipal uh, paper. The For Herald us, is ours the mainly the Herald, the, the one that I'm most aware of. Um. Um, I believe there's legislation around which newspapers are allowed to be used for the purposes of newspaper advertising pursuant to Section 606. Um, I believe, according to those rules, um, it has to do with the newspaper uh, operates and mainly distributes within the municipality in question. And I believe. Uh, and I stand to be corrected, but based on my research, I believe the Herald is the only newspaper that meets those qualifications. Okay. So this, this cost would be mainly the Herald then is what we're saying. Okay, thank you. Councillor Parker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my question is, I'm looking at the sheet and page right now, and it has the public notice for today's public hearing. To our city clerk's department, did you get anyone who was concerned about this or any feedback in regards to the advertisement that was put in the Leopard Herald? There were two submissions received. They were attached to the public hearing agenda. Uh, neither uh, individual uh, confirmed or desired to attend to speak in opposition. However, their, their letters uh, are attached. So of all the papers and how effective this medium is, we've had two people contact us in regards to something if they were concerned because it's blatantly right in this ad that we're planning to change this and we only had two people that were concerned. That's correct. Thank you. Any further questions from council? Okay, hearing none, I now declare the public hearing closed. This matter may be decided later this afternoon following the public hearing. Okay, we'll just take a few minutes to convert back to the city council meeting.
Okay, we're back to the regular City Council meeting. I have a resolution from Acting Mayor Higgin. Workforce reduction initiatives. Whereas unprecedented economic times are upon us and COVID-19 has had a negative impact on the fiscal capacity of the corporation, and whereas residents and businesses and the business sector for profit and not for profit in our community are also experiencing negative financial impacts, and whereas to show leadership in tough economic times, Council directed that the 2020 Council remuneration be held at 2019 rates, which saved $12,600. And whereas Council directed that 2020 management non-union salaries be held at 2019 rates, which saved $509,600. And whereas in June 2020, Council requested a corporate-wide 5 and 10% cost reduction exercise. And whereas the Finance Committee will be reviewing the 2021 and 2022 operating budget the week of November 23rd, 2020. And whereas Council directed KPMG to conduct an operation review to find efficiencies and cost savings. Therefore, be it resolved that Council direct the following staffing actions to support broader expenditure reduction efforts. One, 10% salary reduction for City Council for 2021 at a projected savings of $77,300. Two, direct the City Manager to implement a zero wage increase for management non-union staff for 2021 at a total projected savings of $513,000. 403,000 tax supported and 110,000 utility supported and self supported. Uh, three, direct administration to implement KPMG identified workforce reductions over a three year period using a combination of attrition and retirement to achieve a $5 million savings in salaries and benefits, and a 50% reduction to the mayor and council's travel budget in 2021 for the projected savings of $56,000. Acting Mayor Higgin. Wrong button. I will just open it up for questions. I think it's pretty much self-explanatory in the uh, uh, resolution, so I'll just open it up for any questions. Councillor Croson. Thank you, Mayor Sharon. Thank you, Councillor Higgin, for bringing this forward, but I have a motion to divide and refer. I would like to divide one, two, and four and refer those to the finance meeting of next week and keep number three on today's agenda. I'll need a seconder if anybody's interested. Is there a seconder for Councillor Croson's Kroos, motion to divide? I'll second that. Councillor Kaufman. Okay, Councillor Kaufman. Okay, uh, would you like to discuss the rationale for uh, dividing one, two, and four and moving them to next week? There are already resolutions in the budget binder that relate to numbers one and two, and four would be similar. These are things that we should be discussing in that meeting next week. Uh, number three is a very different kettle of fish than the rest, and I think three should be discussed at a council meeting. Okay. Any questions on the proposed motion to divide? Worship, we already had a motion to refer this item, and it lost. So this this, not this have was, to have that a was a referral motion. Sorry? That was a referral motion. This is a motion to divide. And refer. Finance meeting. Already voted that down. That was already voted. With respect, that was a motion for a much larger motion than this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to allow the motion to divide. Point of order, uh, Your Worship, is can we get a legal opinion on that, please? Because we had already stated that we would not put this forward, and it was 6-1 and 6-2. It didn't matter what was in them. We put 6-2 is that we would not put it off to, to uh, budget. So if, if I'm not mistaken, it doesn't matter what the content is, we had put there that we would not defer it. Mr. Solicitor, do you have an opinion? Perhaps the chair could just reframe the question and, or, or, or the, the asker just to make sure I understand the, 
the issue? Okay, the Councillor Croson has asked that three of these items be referred to next week and that uh, point number three be discussed now. Yep. That's her motion to divide. Is it, is there, is there a problem with what she has proposed? I understood from Councillor Higgins' question that there was an earlier consideration or direction by Council, but I, I, I don't. There, there, there was a referral motion specifying that the entirety of uh, 6.1 and 6.2 be referred to next week, and that motion was, de was defeated. Okay. Then there's no prior Council direction and we can proceed. We can proceed. If I understand correctly. Okay. So we decided we were, just, sorry, to get an understanding here. So we decided that we would not put it forward 6.2 just an hour ago that we would not entertain this at uh, the budget deliberations and that we would be dealing with it today. So you're saying now that even though we've made that vote, we do not have to have a, a three quarter or whatever it is, a vote to, to make sure that, that is done now? I've just... Yeah, my view would be that the, the, the motion uh, referring 6.1 and 6.2 is substantially different from portions of 6.2. But, no, I'm... I... So that's, that's the decision, and so we'll move forward with the motion to divide. So the motion... So that motion has not yet passed, but it will be considered. So... Here's where we are. Any, any questions on motion to divide? Any debate? Mr. Mayor, my hand's up. It's okay, Joe. go ahead. Um, okay, that's not what I heard though from Councillor Croson. I heard that it's to divide and refer. And so I need a little bit more clarification because Councillor Carlson and I put an amendment in to refer item 6.1 and 6.2 and the referral motion was defeated soundly 2 to 7 which means we dealt with, th with that so now we're dealing with 6.2 if it's to divide I'm okay with but it's to divide and refer uh, we just voted on that so the solicitor has offered an opinion, which I'm upholding. Okay, can I ask the solicitor a question then? Sure. Mr. Solicitor, when we voted on the amendment to refer 6.1 and 6.2, which this is, we, re we had an amendment to refer them, and that amendment was lost. The, the vote was to deal with it today, which we did. Doesn't that include 6.2? I don't think... It's the same 6.2 resolution. What's the difference? My... Well, with apologies to... Uh, I'll just reiterate my, my, my previous opinion in that the, the two motions were different enough that they're... But this is a... At the end of the day, this is a procedural question that the chair can rule on. I've offered my opinion and the rationale being um, that the first motion was in pith and substance about collectively referring 6.1 and 6.2. Council decided not to do that. You have before you now a different decision to divide and potentially refer portions of, of one of those two things. Those two resolutions are not incompatible. So in, in my again, view, but that's, okay. it, it's, it's up to the chair to uphold procedural questions. No, and I appreciate, I appreciate your view. So what you're saying then that the, that the amendment earlier, which had 6.2 in it, does not have any play, it doesn't, has, has no significance into dealing with 6.2 right now. That's the, that's the solicitor's opinion. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to understand. Is that your opinion, Mr. Solicitor? I wouldn't I say that know this. They're, 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 they cover similar topics, but they're not the same. So it's not, you're not reconsidering the same decision is, is the, the essence of my opinion. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to proceed with the motion to divide. 
Any further questions? Any debate? Okay, no debate. Uh, Councillor Croson, would you like to close? I'll simply call the question. Question has been called. All in favor of the motion to divide? Yeah, okay, we'll do a roll call. This is just to divide, not to refer? Uh, it's to divide and refer three of them and the point three gets debated today. So calling the, the roll call on dividing and referring three of the items. Councillor Campbell. In favor. Councillor Carlson. In favor. Councillor Kaufman. In favor. Councillor Croson. In favor. Councillor Morrow. Opposed. Councillor Parker. Opposed. Acting Mayor Hagan. Opposed. Deputy Mayor Miyashiro. In favor. Mayor Spearman. In favor. Six to three. Okay, so now we'll discuss point three. Yeah. Ask your mom, I'm in a meeting right now, son. It's like me coming to your class saying, hey, Owen, want to come play with me? <laughs> hey, Ryan, your Ryan, mic is on. Mute yourself. Oh, I'm sorry, son. <laughs> sorry, I got kids at home now. Okay, hey, Councillor Higgin, point number three. It, again, self-explanatory, I'll open up for questions. Okay, hey, any questions to Councillor Higgin regarding point number three? Deputy Mayor Miyashiro. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Acting Mayor Higgin. Um, have you had discussion with uh, anyone in HR about what happens when you do compression like this? Yes, I have. Sat down with Mr. Dalton and our HR manager, and that's what we came up with this. That it, it falls through, it's, it's okay? That's correct. And if I'd have Mr. Dalton maybe speak to this, City Manager Dalton. Yes, I, w I wonder if it, um, procedurally, if it might be possible to go on camera briefly to discuss this, or if if, Hey, city clerk says we can go in camera, so we have a, someone want to move that we go in camera? Councillor Kaufman, motion to go in camera. Okay. And all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we'll, we will go in camera now. 